Welcome to the Hotel California. 
beast They stab it with their stealing eyes But they just can't kill the beast Last thing I remember I was running for the door I had to find the passage back To the place I was before Like seven light men We are programmed to receive We can check out any time you like But you can never leave You can check out any time you like But you can never leave 
go to air tonight, the United States of America is unravelling for all the world to see. DJ Cumberbund. Many of the nation's biggest cities burning in almost unimaginable scenes. I hopped up the plane at LAX with a dream.
everybody <clears throat> how we doing folks and my big question for you guys today where are we at with your personal how do, how do i phrase this uh What are you all feeling today, and how, like, what percentage of you have gotten an early start on 420? That's my, that's one of my big questions for today. When I was trying to figure out how to prep for stream today, my, one of my big, uh, one of my big questions was how exactly you guys are doing, and, like, how many of you are partaking early? Because I want to be able to meet your energy, you know? I want to be able to present you guys uh, content that you will enjoy. I had therapy and rolled up so much weed. I'm making cannabis butter. Yo, Metal Kitty Bomb, one day I want to taste your, like, weed treats. I, I bet they're delicious. Forgot about 420 and I'm stoned now because it's Friday. Fair. Fair. Um, nervous about giving a speech at my state's Democrat congressional conference to run for executive board of the state party. Well, Super Jet Guy, that, that's really cool. And, you know, it's okay to be nervous. You know, I, I get that. I get a lot of anxiety right up until about, like, a minute before I'm about to give a speech. And then, you know, at a certain point, you're just like, fuck it. <laughs> I'm here now. <sighs> um, Tree Sentinel is really hard as astrologer. 
Tree Sentinel is only hard if you insist on fighting Tree Sentinel. Mother Hashpen uh, fully charged. Hell yeah. Hello, Christinos. Hello, VCC TV. Hello, Starry Night. Hello, Zarina Chess. Hello, Christinos. Hello, I'm Idaho. Hello, Kitsune. Kitsune Cavalier. Um, hello, G Klein. Hello, Eleanor. Hello, Lonzetta. Hello, Benjamin Kessler. Hello, Alice Payne. How we all doing? Hello, Ms. Drizzlin. Hello, O.S. Crane. Hello, Mr. Miyagi. Hello, Super Jet Guy. Hello, Snuggle Kitten. Hello, Nine-Tailed Witch. Hello, Metal Kitty Mom. Hello, Darth Gently. Hello, Punky Gal. Hello, Trains and Bullshit. Hello, Periwinkle. Hello, Little Morphine Annie. Hello. I'm sure I missed some of you in here so far. Hello, Amber Brains. Hello. Hello, hello. How we all doing, folks? So, the main bit of content that I had today on the docket was exactly one piece of content. All right? I saw it and I was like, well, I could talk about monstrous labor practices. But I do that a lot on the show. You know, I could you know, really reinforce how funny it is that Elon Musk has had to recall all of the Tesla trucks because they are fundamentally broken um, and dangerous in basically every conceivable way. Um, I do, I do have to talk about to start to start off. One of the best news stories I have ever come across in my life are some of the reports coming out of Donald Trump's trial. He, you know, he, he's on trial in front of a jury for 34 crimes of fraud. And the man cannot stay awake in court, so he keeps falling asleep, right? And the reports are that not only does he fall asleep, but that when he falls asleep, he just starts letting big, wet farts out. Nasty, and I'm using, I'm quoting the word that was used, putrid farts that are so pungent and so aromatic that they are making his legal team uncomfortable. And I, I kid you not, that was one of the, I, I cackled for like 10 minutes. I straight up cackled, okay? And I need to find uh, the original uh, tweet that I found here. Because it, it is sublime. It is incredible. Here it is. Found it. Um, just, I, no words. Here, here we go. Returning to the court proceedings as well, Maggie Haberman reports that Donald Trump continued to fall asleep during the proceedings as well. Um, and, you know, what I'm hearing from my sources as well is that, um, you know, and, and I'm hearing from credible sources who know what's going on in the courtroom. And what I'm hearing is, is that, um, t take it for what it's worth, but that Donald Like this guy, this guy is like trying to deliver this. And he's like, I, I know you're not, I know you guys aren't going to believe me when I say this, but I, I still have to tell you. Donald Trump is actually farting in the courtroom and that <laughs> it's very stinky around him. It's a putrid odor in the court. President 42, baby. The 42 stands for farts. <laughs> and that Trump's lawyers um, are like repulsed by the scent and the smell. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not just saying that to be like, oh, 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 buddy, buddy. I'm actually, you know, we have good sources there. President And Stinky. I'm hearing it from actual credible people that as he's kind of falling asleep, he is actually passing gas and that his lawyers are really struggling with the <laughs> smell. I think you'll actually start to hear more of that. But 
again from real credible sources. Now take it for what it's worth. They Stinky may be done. going off the record. I mean, on background and telling me that because of um, you know it's the Midas touch, and they, you know they think that we want to hear that. So you could judge it how you want to judge it. But real credible people who are there um, have saying that it's putrid um, around him. <laughs> Putrid. It's putrid. Do you know how bad a fart has to be to be described as putrid? Millions of people fart every day. The vast majority of them, silent killers, okay? Vast majority of them. You have to have something wrong in, like, your your digestive tract, in your, in your like ability to eat food that is making your farts nuclear <laughs> i you know the, i i i have not sought out any additional confirmation of this because frankly i i just you know like like molder from uh x files i just want to believe okay i just want to i just want to believe i want to believe in my president, okay? That's my president right there. Donald Trump. More like Donald Dump. Nailed it. End of segment. <laughs> That's my grandma's beans that she left in the fridge for three weeks. <laughs> oh my god. Not the first set of allegations of him being a stinky fellow. <laughs> the scent of rotting American beef and nuggies. God. Nah, you know what? You know what? I'm sorry. I've had a lot of Taco Bell. No one has ever described my farts as putrid. All right? Like, you can have the worst Taco Bell you've ever had in your life. It's not going to smell putrid unless there's something wrong with you. <laughs> it's probably not just the farts either. Haven't been, there been reports of him wearing diapers and trying to cover the smell up with tons of body spray for ages? I have not encountered any of those reports, but very funny if true. Do you find Trump's gas guilty of jury tampering? Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. President 42 playing playing Ford 42 D chess, okay? <laughs> he's not on five. He's not he's not 40. He's not 5D. He's 42D. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> I'm having too much fun with this story. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm having too much fun. I'm so sorry. <sighs> Y'all ever tackled True Crunch Wrap Supremes and a Doritos Locos Tacos platter in one day? College were college was dark days. I I disagree. I think you mean glory days right there. Back when we, back when we had metabolisms that could handle that. Am I right? Bioterrorism. Yeah, they they add the additional charge. The jury at their discretion has the ability to add bioterrorism <laughs> to the list of charges. Oh my god. I refuse to look up any any confirmation or denial about Donald Trump's farts. Uh, I, I refuse. You can't make me, okay? <laughs> Serious political analysis, folks. Ah. <sighs> I know it's not political, Jack, but did you hear about the Watcher controversy? No, what's that? I can still eat a 20-pack of Taco Bell tacos? Damn, son! 
That's a lot of tacos. Every, no, 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 every, everyone in the court wishes they were under a gag order. No, everyone in the court is now by default under a gag order of a very different kind. Yeah, look, I think there's only one way to really straighten out who should be the next president, and that's a farting contest between Joe Biden, Joseph Robinette Biden, and Donald Trump. Okay? It's the only way. Whoever can fart themselves into the White House wins. You might say, but Joe, Joe can't fart that much. Oh, yeah? Have you ever heard or seen him fart? I haven't. Could be too powerful. Might level the entire, entirety of Washington, D.C. A fart off, let's go. Yep. Hello, only dogs can judge me. How you doing? Okay, so I only have one other prepped uh, piece of content for y'all today. And that is very specifically a debate. Now, this debate was approximately yesterday. And it is two hours long. And so... Part of why I was asking how many of you have started celebrating 420 a bit early is trying to judge what's your tolerance for a two-hour-long debate between Jank Uger and Dennis Prager and two other people, but mostly Jank Uger and Dennis Prager. Uh, what, what's your tolerance for that today? What's your, what's your tolerance for brain rot? Oh, God, I'm a die. I'd be down. No. Who are these two people? Uh, Cenk Uger is the main host of the most watched online uh, progressive uh, news show called The Young Turks. And Dennis Prager is the uh, head and patriarch of PragerU, a fake university that is backed by billionaires uh, to spread conservative propaganda. Rot my brains out? All right, let's go. Also, folks, remember remember how I said I I I I I'd lost like a lot of weight? I'm almost I'm almost down to like 15 pounds away from my goal. I'm making I'm making a lot of progress and I'm feeling pretty good about myself. And I think I can see it in the camera, which is kind of weird. I, I think it's pretty cool, you know? I think it's I think it's pretty I you know, I'm accomplishing things with my body. <sighs> All right. Hell yeah. <laughs> and uh before we get into this, hit the follow button on Twitch, hit the subscribe button on YouTube, like the goddamn YouTube stream. And uh What do they say in Beyblade? Let it let it rip. Let it rip, everybody. It's almost uh, it's almost four twenty anyway. It's four twenty somewhere. <laughs> Let's go. And of course, it's hosted by Sagar and Jetty. Are you shitting me? Okay, sorry. All right. Wow. I, I'm sorry, I wasn't prepared for the outright fascist to be hosting the debate. Everybody, and welcome to the Zero Hedge debate. The topic today is Israel's invasion of Gaza morally justified. Oh we will also be touching on the topic of Iran, anti Semitism, free speech here. This is going to be spicy, and it's going to be so dumb. It's going to be so dumb, chat. It's going to be so dumb. Moses had a Beyblade. It's true. It's true. If you watch the real, the real history of Beyblades, the, the, bladers, the, the bladers escaped Egypt underneath uh, Moses. It, it, that's canon. 
here in the United States. And just some ground rules I'll lay out to everybody. This will be cringe. So the audience understands. Yep. Uh, I, I'm going to be an aggressive moderator. I will cut people off. However, uh, I just want to make it sure at the top we can agree everything will be civil. No crosstalk, if possible. Try not to cut each other off. Definitely no ad hominem attacks. That's going to be a total no-go and absolutely be cutting that. I'm not going to be enforcing time limits in terms of responses, and I do encourage both interaction, asking uh, questions to each other. If we do ask a question, I'm going to re uh, request both that it's actually answered and that it's engaged in a respectful manner, and I will be jumping in there a little bit. In general, I have questions that can help guide, but I really would like to leave it up to everybody here. And uh, so I think with that, I'm going to offer some opening statements. I'll give everybody, let's say, a couple of minutes, like three minutes or so. And uh, so with that, I I'm excited for a Dennis debate, but I'm less excited for speeding up the segments where Dennis is the one talking because he's such a slow talker. Literally, when we cover his fireside chats, I speed it up to like 1.5 speed, and he just sounds like he's talking at a normal pace. I think we should go ahead and start. Hey, Lauren we'll Walker. start with you, Dennis. Dennis Prager is the founder of Prager University and the host of the Dennis Prager radio show. On the topic is Israel's invasion. Okay, look, also, I know, I know I'm going to be a real pause champ about this, but I do want to say, I know that um you know people who claim to be able to read like body language you know the body language experts on youtube largely just a whole a whole crock of shit you know um but i'm gonna i'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say that dennis prager does not look like he is very confident. <laughs> he looks like he's already on the defensive. Like Jenk said something like mildly inconvenient to his worldview and he's already gone harumph. Like dude dude has media training. Dude has media training. What are you doing? <laughs> of Gaza morally justified. Let's start there which is the stated topic. Go ahead, sir. So thank you very much. Thank you uh, all who are watching. By the way, which is my camera? Because I want to talk to the audience. Go ahead. I think it's is that it over there? there? Hi everybody. All right. Thank you for having me. The the dilemma in the Middle East has always been the same from the beginning of. Okay, over under on how long you think it's going to take Dennis Prager to say that he's fine uh, with like killing both terrorists and hostages. How, how long do you think it's going to take him to say that? Of Israel's creation in 1948, and that is that its neighbors do not want there to be a Jewish state in their midst. That is the entire problem. One side, as I have put it all of my life, one side wants the other side dead. And in case you were in doubt about it, October 7th should have made that clear. If you really want to have a, a serious moral debate, and one should, and you're not already committed to the anti-Israel side, I have a question. And I think this question more or less clarifies everything. If Israel announced we are disarming and we will fight no longer, what would happen? If the Palestinians said we are disarming and we will fight no longer, what would happen? If you are intellectually honest, you know the answer to the question. The day after Israel announced it disarmed, you would have an October 7th of the entire population of Israel. There would be finally an actual genocide. Not I'm, uh, I'm, wow, I, I'm not, I haven't, I haven't ever encountered this strategy before in uh, rhetorical debate. Um, it, basically, the correlation he's trying to make here is, you know, on the one hand, if uh, if the people in Gaza put down their arms, nothing would happen. But if Israel put down their arms, Hamas would summon uh, the magical spell Meteor and hurl it onto Israel, wiping it off the face of the earth. And it's just like, that that's the level of fantastical. His His current, like proposal here is 
Pal- Palestinians could not wipe off wipe Israel off the face of the earth if they wanted to. There's no ability for them to do that. There is no means by which they could do that. And also, I'm just going to throw this out there. The world would not be okay with it if they started engaging in a genocide like against Israelis. Like that would not that would also not fly on an international level if like like what's happening now, Dennis, is the eradication of Palestinians in the Gaza Strip, in East Jerusalem, in the the occupied territories, uh the West Bank. You know, like that's happening now. There's already plans and a significant political movement within Israel right now. It's just a much slower rolling elimination set to like wipe them out in a hundred years as opposed to like three years. Yeah, exactly, Bill Casey. That that's the other thing, right? Like it's it's already such a straw man argument that like literally no one is saying Israel shouldn't be able to defend themselves if someone is trying to destroy them off the face of the earth. What we're what we're asking is to actually have proportionate responses and to be able to engage in diplomacy because ev- any conflict, the only way conflicts end is either in complete eradication or some level of diplomacy. Like that's the the those are your options. Vintage Parent, hello, hello. Welcome back. Good to see you again. Up to the f- false accusation of Israeli genocide in Gaza. If the Palestinians announced that the next day or perhaps the next week, there would be peace. This is the only time, as the little excerpt I saw when I spoke at Oxford and debated this issue, this is the only case in modern history where people believe the democracy, the free state, the state with an opposition press, an opposition party, civil rights for all its citizens, including its two. I, oh, 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 that that is. So you gonna are you gonna are you gonna break down the uh, opposition party in Israel right now? What's uh, what's their current uh, ability to oppose? Hey, hey, Dennis, are you going to talk about how uh, Netanyahu uh, very nearly uh, was able to pass judicial reforms that would have made him a dictator for life? Are you going to talk about that? No? no. Oh, that's so weird. That's so weird, bud. Two million Arab citizens. The, the peace-loving state, the democracy, is the aggressor, and the police state that tortures its opponents, they're the good guys. N- no one's saying Hamas are the good guys, except, like, people whose brains are Swiss cheese. What people are saying is that Israel is indeed, like, aggressing here in response to, like, a thousand, twelve hundred people being killed on October 7th. They've killed thir- over 30,000. I think the, the death toll is now up to, like, 34,000 people. And, like, two-thirds of them are, are children? Like, it, it's crazy. Like, you're, you're saying, you're, you're, like, essentially trying to look me in the eye and tell me that, like, oh, well, you know, it's okay that we've killed 20,000 children. Because they, you know, the the governing faction of this small area was able to kill, like, 1,200, you know? And, like, both are horrible, but one is on a different magnitude than the other. I, (laughs) man, I don't know, dude. I, I, I feel like this is the most obvious thing in the world. That is how inverted it is. I have a theory as to why everything is inverted, and I believe it is because it is the one Jewish state in the world. There are 22 Arab states. There are uh, also, it is funny to hear Dennis Prager try and argue that like no democracy has ever been the uh, aggressor in the wrong in the United States. But, you know, whatever. 52 Muslim states. There are 200 states around about that number all over the world. Only one. Only one 
is targeted for extinction. There is no other state targeted for extinction, only the one Jewish state. De Dennis, did you forget about the U the, the Russia-Ukraine war? Russia literally wants to wipe out Ukraine and destroy their entire culture and history while chanting blood and soil arguments. Like what what are you what are you talking about? State the size of New Jersey. And so that is the issue. One side wants the other side dead, and it has been true since 1948. All right, Dennis, thank you very much. Uh, Cenk, why don't we go to you, uh, founder of the Young Turks? Go ahead. Yeah. So first of all, we should clarify the question, because if we're saying, hey, was Israel right to go in in the first place after October 7th, I say yes, but it depends on how and uh, how long do you stay, how long, how do you conduct affairs, etc. If we're talking about uh, how Israel has conducted this war and whether they should still be in there, that's a hard no. It's not even close. It's uh, been absolutely atrocious what they've done. And not only has it killed over 33,000 Palestinians, uh, with probably a lot more than that inside the rubble, 76,000 wounded, 1.1 uh, million people starving. If you think that uh, that is good for Israel, I think that you ought to have a sanity check. So not only is it devastating for the Palestinians, potentially devastating for the world, as Netanyahu now agitates for a broader war with Iran engulfing the entire Middle East, which will be catastrophic for America and the world. But for Israel itself, if you want a safe haven for Jews, you must stop the occupation. 75 long, brutal years. So it's one thing to say, hey, um, theoretically, Hamas would do this. And by the way, I'm then going to say all Palestinians would do that or all Muslims would do that. That's dangerous area to go to, right? It's another thing to say, yes, well, while they theoretically... Yeah, like Cenk, Cenk is a big dum-dum about a lot of things, but he is generally correct on this issue. We don't want our state to exist. We are actually preventing their state from existing. I mean, it's such an ironic argument. Hey, we prevented their state for 75 long years. We prevented them from having freedom for 75 long years. We brutalized them in every uh, possible way. We've humiliated them in every possible way. Number one, we can't believe they're fighting back. Are you serious? We'll talk a lot about this in the debate. But so, were it, it would it people Jews uh, would people have been surprised if Jews fought back against the Germans during World? Remember the right wants this. They think it is good. They think it will bring the end times. True. Uh, and though that largely applies to just the United States, it, it, like conservatives in other countries, I don't think are as riddled with, you know, this religious apocalyptic brain poison. And for those of you who are like, what are you, what are you talking about? Um, I think I actually literally have the book.
I couldn't find the exact book I was looking for. But I found one by the same author of the book that I was looking for. Um, so Hal Lindsey here uh, wrote a long series of books in the 70s and 80s, uh, basically about the end times. These are end times prophecy books. Basically recontextualizing uh, the book of Revelations from the Bible to incorporate modern day events. And uh, yeah, there, there's, there's a whole thing about it. Uh, the first one's called The Late Great Planet Earth. Um, let's see here. Yeah. I'm trying to find here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, basically, like, riddled throughout this, you'll find, like, portions of chapters called, like, a 20th century allegory, and slavery has many faces. You know, like, basically, it's just recontextualizing Christianity to be like, ah, yes, the Russians are going to kill us all in the Cold War. Like, and that'll be a good thing, actually. Um, it, it's it's weird. It's wild. Um, you can definitely check out books like The Late Great Planet Earth, but um, just know that they kicked off like an entire movement within e evangelical Christianity of like this apocalypse worship um, and people who want to hasten the the coming of the apocalypse and. That is now, uh, in my estimation, the majority of evangelicals in America. And that's a pretty scary thought. Millions of people coordinating to bring about the end times. <sighs> anyway, here we go. World War II, would that have been terrorism? Is that what it would have been? That's outrageous to say that. Of course, Jews should have been able to fight back against the Germans. Any occupied people should be able to fight back. We can go to uh, Armenians fighting back against the Ottoman Empire. Okay, so those are my uh, original people. I'm Turkish descent. And if you said, well, the Armenians, how dare they? They should have loved the Turks. And they should have said the Turks are the greatest people on earth. And they should have been occupied and accepted their occupation. I can't believe they fought back. And you know what? When the Turks uh, moved them and killed them, they were just defending themselves. They have a right to defend themselves. Guys, I don't, if you're in that camp, I don't think you understand how biased you sound and how it does not sound to anyone outside of your camp that you're in a rational world. So True. if you want Israel to be safe, you must end the occupation. It is not optional. So is the goal here to say, as Netanyahu is clearly saying now, he's saying, I do not want a two-state solution. Permanent occupation means permanent war, permanent terrorism, and a disaster for Israel, let alone the Palestinians. Got it. Batya. I mean, that this is, I think, one of Jenk's best arguments against, uh, you know, the, the Israeli occupation, which is that essentially everyone in power supports the occupation. You know, they do not support a two-state solution. They support a one-state solution. However, since they're the occupying power, they could just annex that territory. There's literally no military force stopping them from annexing that territory. Now, would other countries in the region have uh, issues with that? Of course. Of course they would. But... Israel has the United States to back it up. 420 button. Penny, thank you for getting Robert ad set a sub. I appreciate that. And the reason Israel doesn't annex the occupied territories is because they don't want Palestinians living under Israeli law instead of living under Israeli military law. 
they don't want equal voting rights for the millions of Palestinians in Palestinian territory. It would represent a colossal watershed change in their political landscape that would basically obliterate the current balance of power as it, as it is currently formatted. They don't want that. And they also don't want a two-state solution. So instead, what you have is the Israeli compromise. And the Israeli compromise is just the slow rolling building of illegal settlements. You know, they push out the Palestinians, they build up the Israeli settlements, and then they annex the settlements. And that has been going on for decades now, displacing millions of Palestinians. And eventually, that, that does have an endpoint. They cannot expand indefinitely. So at some point, maybe a hundred years from now, they'll have annexed the entirety of the occupied territories without having to actually have done things like, you know, give Palestinians rights or, you know, equal treatment under the law. You know, they don't, they would, they would have effectively taken over this territory while performing a very slow ethnic cleansing. That's the current plan. Why don't you go ahead, uh, Bacha Ungar Sargon. She is opinion editor at Newsweek, and she's the author of Second Class, How the Elites Betrayed America's Working Men and Women, which we have a copy of on the desk <laughs> right over there. She was so kind to give us one. Go ahead, Bacha. You can go ahead. Sorry. Um, thank you Good so evening, much for having Gamer me. G. I'm so honored to be here with this panel. Um, <clears throat> are we all in agreement that Israel was just to invade after October 7th, Shank, you agreed with that. Um, Dennis, you obviously agreed with that. I agree with that. Dave, are you in agreement that that was a just? I, I would say, like, Jenk, it depends on what you mean by, by invasion. what followed. But, yeah. Sure, sure. But, but the initial what you did with invasion that. itself, you could see that from a just point, that there would, would have, that, that would have been justified based on October 7th, based on had they conducted themselves. There was a way they could, that Israel could have conducted itself that you would have felt comfortable with that as a reaction to October 7th. Is that accurate? Well, I mean, look, if you're spending your opening asking me a question, it's a fairly complex question, but I would certainly say that Israel was more than justified in uh, pursuing and killing. Who is this? I, I did not Google Dave Smith because I did not think that would bring up a narrow enough individual to, like, identify this guy. Does anyone know who, who this is off the top of their heads? Anything about him? Like, wh what's his background? What's his deal? Is this a zero hedge debate? You bet your bootstraps. Is it this guy? Oh, God, it is this guy. What? What? Why is he on this panel? Oh, I think he's been on a Piers Morgan show. I think I remember seeing him on one of those panels. Dude, dude's a regular on the Greg Gutfeld show. My God. And he's a member of the Libertarian Party. So, okay. He's, uh... Not a serious person. Cool. Just brought down the quality of this discussion. Telling anybody who was involved in October 7th. Why don't we cut the questions there? Continue with your opening statement. We'll get to well, that. Well, yeah. I think that's very important because um, then we can narrow the scope of the debate. It doesn't have to be about whether the war is just, but whether Israel's behavior since invading mm -hmm. was just and the way that it has carried it out. And I think the answer to that is very clearly yes, because um, first of all, the uh, measures that Israel has taken Obviously, we look at the destruction and it is horrifying. We see these children, we see women, we see people being impacted in the most horrific, horrific way. And Bye. it looks horrible. But the reality is, is There's that war is horrible. And the thing that we have to determine is, is Israel engaged in a war or in war crimes, right? Is Israel engaged in a justified response to a heinous attack? Uh, again, what it, it, you might be able to argue, like the initial retaliatory attack that Israel undertook was justifiable. You might be able to argue that. I, I don't care to. 
but you might be able to argue that. I don't think now, six months into it, with 30,000 people dead, 20,000 of whom are children, I don't think you can really argue that this is that this is like an acceptable justifiable scenario. War is horrible says says the IDF soldier wiping the blood of 20,000 children off of his rifle. Like what what are you, what are you doing? What are, what are you doing? It actually insane and deranged. Hack, or is it going and, and doing things that are beyond the pale? And the evidence seems to suggest that Israel is not only behaving in a way that every other army has behaved in a very similar situation, but... Just want to uh, remind you all that there was a report from uh, an international human rights organization just yesterday that uh, stated that there were eyewitness testimonies from the area around one of the refugee camps in northern Gaza of drones playing the sounds of screaming women, children, and babies calling for help in the night, uh, at which point anyone who responded to try and help uh, the presumed uh, injured people would be shot by the drone that was playing it over speakers. So... I don't think that that is in accordance, you know, if that is borne out as true. Because, again, Israel has also killed uh, most of the journalists operating in the Gaza Strip. Um, but if that wound up being true, I would say that that goes well above and beyond. Um, <laughs> like, uh, the, the bar to be considered a war crime. But in a much more careful way despite the massive massive destruction and the C citation needed the idf fired upon people going to get flour they've fired upon like their own hostages like th this is not isolated they're not they're not being careful at all what are you talking about they 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 bombed clearly marked humanitarian aid trucks three times and you're gonna say oh but but you know they held the people accountable for that they fired two people being fired from your job for murdering seven people is not accountability the evidence for that is in the efforts that they have made the millions and millions of phone calls they make you understand that israel telegraphs to the enemy before every single thing that it does no it doesn't and also the telegraphing it does is so incoherent that, like, Palestinians cannot follow the telegraphs because there are no, like, safe corridors that they are aware of. Because, again, all of the information and communication services in Gaza have been cut out. Like, they can't, they can't just look up a map and see where it's safe to go at that particular moment. In Gaza... They're literally Hell giving yeah, away Rondo. the plan in order to get civilians out of harm's way. Now, can more be done? They're giving away the plan by, bop by dropping smaller bombs before they drop bigger bombs. You know, also ignore all that stuff about the uh, Israeli AI that is helping uh, to indiscriminately target civilians by uh, waiting for anyone with possible Hamas affiliation, i.e., and a Keep in mind, Hamas is also the civil government government of Gaza. Anyone with uh, Hamas affiliation is being targeted specifically by being bombed at home during dinner with their families. They, the, they have specific targeting protocols to kill civilians and families. Like, what, what, are you, what are you talking about? They're, oh, they're so committed to truth and justice that they are annihilating entire families on purpose, including the children. 
more can always be done. But have they gone further than any army in human history? The answer is yes. The number 33,000. Man, they've gone further than any army in history, then it's kind of crazy that this has one of the most disproportionate death toll for women and children in the entire, like, world, and uh, in, in, like, all, all, all conflict around the world right now, more children have, di have died than if you combine all other conflicts around the world. More children have died in, in uh, the Gaza Strip. Oh, but, but Israel, the IDF is the most uh, meritorious army in the entire world. Then it's crazy that, like, the armies of, like, warlords and, like, despots are somehow killing less innocent children. That's wild. Last week, Hamas put out um, a, a statement on Telegram in which they said they cannot account for 11,000 of those. So Hamas itself reduced the number to 22,000, which means that if you take the number of Hamas soldiers who have been killed, right, Israel says 13,000, Hamas itself in February admitted to 6,000. We're talking about a ratio of combatants to non-combatants that, again, simply has not been seen in urban warfare. You you've killed you've killed tw like twenty thousand children, <laughs> like I there's not really any getting over that. The reason that the uh, the the Gaza Health Ministry hasn't been able to confirm so many deaths is because they're currently buried under rubble. You ghoul. All of these things, I think, come together to suggest that despite the enormous devastation, and I'm with you on that emotionally, we have to analyze no, you're this not. objectively and conclude that if you are saying 33,000 as the number of dead, you are mourning the butchers. And I think that's shameful. I think it's really important that people who are mourning the civilians... You are mourning the butchers, says this woman, about a death toll of that includes, like, 20,000 children. Yeah, you're, you're mourning the butchers. Every single one of those children. Hamas. Disgusting. Make sure that they are careful that they are not mourning exactly what we all have agreed on, which is that the butchers. Oh yeah, I Annie Annie Bo, I did not actually mention that. Um, one second, let me pull this up. Oh, I don't think it was uh, Daddy's Home. Um, yeah, so remember when I initially talked about the Lavender AI, Lavender being the AI that helps uh, to target um, anyone affiliated with Hamas, anyone who might be affiliated with Hamas, target them and their families. Um real quick here all right israel's where's daddy ai system helps target suspected hamas militants when they're at home with their families so in addition to being called the lavender ai system uh the specific tag where's daddy was like the name of the app. It was lit literally predicated and named after targeting, you know, daddy along with all of his children, you know? Absolutely monstrous. Israel had every right, not just every right, but a moral right and a moral obligation to kill them. Got it. Thank you, Vaja. Dave, uh, you can go ahead. Comedian, and he's host of the Part of the Problem podcast. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, sure. Well, since we have a short opening here, I, I think I'll just respond to a couple things that I, I've heard you guys say so far. So one of the things that I notice uh, almost in every war 
is that it kind of drives people down to this most base collectivist understanding of what's going on here. You know, this side is bad, this side is good, and no one really seen, sees the nuance that there are individuals involved. So, for example, in, it just, just in the war uh, between Ukraine and Russia, you see people who have the Ukrainian uh, flag in their Twitter bio, and they celebrate when there's a, a Russian defeat, never really considering the fact that many of these Russian young boys were conscripted into this. You can recognize that they're, cons they're, they're conscripts and that they don't want to be there. But also you can recognize that their job, even if it's being done without enthusiasm, is to kill as many Ukrainians as possible and take over their country so that they can effectively, you know, uh, destroy any and all Ukrainian culture from the face of the earth. He's already weird off to a weird start. Yep. Let's go. With, uh, you know, I promised you ultimate brain rot. Here we're, here, we're getting it, baby. This army and that they're victims too. And, you know, when Mr. Prager says one side wants peace and the other side wants to kill all of these people, it's a very convenient collectivist way to look at things. But the reality, the objective reality of the situation here is that there have been atrocities on both sides committed against the other. Go to toppings uh, for when you're testing at a pizza joint you haven't tried before. Uh, pepperoni. Usually I'd go pepperoni and sausage, but if I if I just wanted like a really base uh, understanding of the pizza, I'd go with pe uh, sausage. Other side. This is true throughout the history of the existence of Israel. This is true before the existence of the state of Israel when with the Zionist settlers, the British, the Arabs. There were atrocities committed on all sides. And th to say that everybody, as if, or, or to imply that, Everybody on the Israeli side just wants peace, and everybody on the Palestinian side just wants... That is just not true. There are true. lots of Palestinians who just want peace, and there are lots of Israelis who want their land and are quite willing and will openly, explicitly say they're willing to do whatever it takes to take their land. Now, to your point about how, I mean, you said every single strike they're warned. No, that is just not true. That's objectively not true. They do warn sometimes, but then you also, that also leads to the question of, does that mean that whatever you do is just okay? The reality is that this is not just a war like any other war. And that doesn't mean other wars are justified necessarily, but there's a very big difference in this war compared to almost any other war we could think of. And the major difference that I see is that I'm, I'm sorry the with horror, I was just, you know, he's a libertarian. He's about to say the major difference that I see is that this one involves the age of consent. And I, and then he has to be carted off stage before he says anything else. Israel has dominated the Palestinian people since at least 1967. And we could probably go back before that. Let me just say this. If we look at things in not a collectivist way, and we recognize that there are, group, there are individuals, and these individuals make up different groups, let's say we have the group that is Hamas, made up of individuals, but that's Hamas. Within that group, we have the militant Hamas, and we have the political arm of Hamas. They are different. We also have, um, we have Israel, which is made up of its citizens. We have different political parties within Israel. Okay, the, let's take this one group for a second the innocent Palestinians. I hope both of you would concede that such a group does exist. There are some people on the pro-Israel side who will explicitly tell you that that group does not exist. I think if we're being honest with ourselves, there is no group that has been more victimized than the innocent Palestinians. And at a certain point, maybe we ought to think about that group. Nobody has been through it worse than that group, the innocent Palestinians. And at a certain point, I think the question needs to be asked, does Israel have a right to do what it's been doing to the innocent Palestinians? I'm actually pretty shocked that this so far seems to be a relatively, like, this, you know, for a libertarian, this is a surprisingly correct-ish uh, take. For many, many decades now. 
Very, thank you guys very much. You all stayed. Yeah, the collectivist point is ruining the strength of his argument, but like it, it is stronger than I was expecting. Which, to be fair, my my bar was very low. In the time limit, which is actually incredible. And Bhatia, you did steal a little bit of my thunder because, and I'm a bit glad that you answered that question. Dave and both Jenk both responded in that way about how exactly what the question and the superimposed upon that is that do we agree that Israel at least either had a right or was justified in taking some action as a result of October 7th? So my question, I think, to both of you, and both of you can feel free to chime in after uh, both of them has responded, is if we look at the original statements um, for the the war and for the invasion is that the Israeli military was supposed to accomplish a few objectives. He actually does well here. Only dogs can judge me. All right. All right. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe there's some hope for him. Okay. Maybe we can make him a libertarian socialist, huh? Number one, Probably they had not. to destroy Hamas, the militant terrorist organization. Two, they had to lead to the release of the hostages. And three, they had to make sure that an October 7th could never happen again. So in the conduct of the war so far, do you believe that they have been successful with those objectives? Dennis, why don't you go ahead and go first? None of us knows yet. Israel is being prevented by much of the world. And it, 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 it's... I feel that on this entire issue, I, I'm, I'm living uh, in a make-believe world. The every Fro Freudian slip, Dennis. Freudian, Freudian slip, Dennis. Can we, I? I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need that sound clip for the soundboard. Just uh, here. And it, it, it it's. I feel that on this entire issue, I, I'm, I'm living uh, in a make-believe world. <laughs> we know, Dennis. The Every analogy could have been applied to Nazi Germany. There were innocent Germans who were killed by the Allies in the bombing and in invasions and so on. The, no one denies that. But to point out that there were innocent Germans while the Nazis were in charge is a morally idiotic point. It means nothing. It only means that every innocent German's life that was taken is the responsibility of the Nazis. Every innocent Palestinian life that has been taken is the responsibility of Hamas or Hezbollah. That I'm, I'm, I'm sorry here, but like, that's, that's not how this works, Dennis. That's... That's not how this works. That's not how geopolitics works. Like, th this would be like um, if the United States tried to argue it was justified in carpet bombing Mexico because uh, one too many illegal immigrants came in. You know, like, that, that, th that's the level of, like, weirdness he's arguing here. Like, you wronged us first, so we're justified murdering you completely and utterly. Like, n that's not how that works. That's not how that works. That's it. The, the analogy is perfect. There is one difference between Hamas and the Nazis. And I never called any group in my 40 years of radio Nazis. Also, you know what? I, I'm willing to grant that there, that, that Hamas is, like, a very deeply, deeply evil organization. I, I'm willing to grant them that for sure. Um, but like, we can't, we can't, we can't pretend that like Hamas just came into existence in a vacuum. That's not how. That's not how geopolitics work. See, I never called an individual that, other than the Nazis of of the 1940s. But there is only one difference between Hamas and the, and the real Nazis of Germany. The Germans hid their atrocities. Hamas boasts and videos them. Man. Dennis, have you ever, have you ever looked at IDF TikTok? Have you, have, have you ever, ever looked at IDF TikTok? Like, 
I, I, I don't know. This was like a couple weeks into it. He's driving a military bulldozer, just as an FYI. Um, quote, I stopped counting how many neighborhoods I've erased. The caption reads on the video posted to his personal TikTok, accompanied by a mil uh, militaristic anthem. You know, normal things to be boasting about. You know, when you're, you know, they're, they're just there to target the, not, the Nazi Hamas organization. Then why are they bragging about entire neighborhoods being erased, Dennis? Why, why, why are the soldiers routinely posting war crimes on IDF TikTok, Dennis? W weird. Weird stuff. Man, let's, uh, I, I mean, what, what about this one? These, these are just from, by the way, this isn't me digging very hard either. Like, I, I just Googled IDF TikTok and, like, the second or third result were, was, like, the New York Times going over a set of, like, uh, TikToks from IDF soldiers. Wow, f fun, fun, fun stuff. The clip was paired with a parody version of the Israeli song "This Was My Home," which was featured in an Israeli comedy sketch and has spread online in recent months among Israeli social media users making fun of Palestinians. You know, D Dennis, it's totally, it's totally normal for the military to be gloating about wiping out entire neighborhoods of Palestinians. It's so, so normal. Weird. Anyway. Bacha, go ahead. Um, I think that they have, I would say, destroying Hamas, definitely. They're not going to get every single one, but the idea that Yihya Sinwar will ever breathe open air again seems to me very far-fetched. I think they have driven him underground forever. And, you know, they've cut off the head. And the idea that Hamas will be able to regroup at this point seems to me uh, very unlikely. Hamas? The release of the hostages, no, they failed on that front. Um, I think they tried. Maybe they could have tried harder. I think, unfortunately, I hate to say this, but I think a lot of them are dead. Um, there's a lot to say about that, but um, mm -hmm. I think on that they've obviously failed. And uh, as to another October 7th, um, I think a lot of that has to do with what we're seeing now um, in terms of the realignment happening um, in the Middle East to where you see Saudi Arabia um, clinging to the idea that they too will be able to join the Abraham Accords at some point. The oh, God. Yeah. Uh, God. Um, sorry, Lily Love stuff. I, you just reminded me of the entire Pallywood conspiracy that was pushed on Israeli social media about... Um, how Palestinians were actually faking all of the damage from from being invaded, like it was all they. The claim was basically that in in Qatar there's uh, movie studios, and so they they built a movie studio in Qatar to like fake war crimes from the IDF that, in order to explain how all of these all of these videos started coming out from IDF TikToks. Yeah, but it, completely ignore that. Ignore ignore that. That that's inconvenient for Dennis's narrative. It's inconvenient for Batya uh, Ungar Sargon's uh, narr narrative. The the moderate Sunni and Gulf states rushed to Israel's defense, amazingly, to to protect them from these ir Iranian rockets. And to me, that is, you know, I mean, I, I don't think this is a moral question so much as a strategic one. Um, and I'm sure we're going to get into where does the United States fit into all this? Where How do you all even know about this? I, I've been I've been covering this fairly consistently since October 7th. We, we want the United know. States to fit into yes. all this. But from that point of view, and an Iran-backed um, October 7th, um, should it happen again, is going to be to happen in a very different Middle East, one in which Israel has a lot of support from the Arab nations, and that makes it less likely as well, I believe. Yeah, I just, I, I, yeah. What? what? 
if Iran wanted to do an October 7th, they could do a much bigger one. What are you, what are you talking about? Wait, wh why are you creating this weird hypothetical alternate reality? I'm just kind of, uh, I'm blown away by the statement that Mr. Prager just made that the only difference he can see between the Nazis and Hamas is that the Nazis hid their atrocities. So if that's the only difference you can see, I just, I have a few others uh, that pop to mind. Um, the Nazis were a government. The Nazis had an army. The Nazis had an air force. The Nazis had submarines. The Nazis controlled from France to Poland in all of Europe, whereas Hamas... The, the Nazis also had a state. No, notably can't even control gaza effectively i mean i just i i find the statement that you can't see any differences between the nazis killed you see a over difference well okay but hold on but you said that wasn't what you said what you said is that you can't see a difference what, the nazis every, okay. okay but the not yes i see a, a moral difference the nazis killed over 10 million people outside of the war conflict just in terms of people that they killed let alone the tens of millions of people who you might hold them responsible for so yes i do see a moral difference between the two yeah, and pa pallywood's been around for a long time i'm not saying october 7th was in horrifically immoral but if you're going to say do you see a moral difference that would be like if somebody had murdered two people and you went i see no difference between that and the nazis uh, okay yes there's they're both immoral but there's enormous differences between the two now to the, to the other point of the idea of can israel eliminate hamas even if they were which i don't think is feasibly possible that they eliminated everybody who is a member of Hamas. I mean, in order to do this, you would have to look at, you know, if, if the images of Gaza City aren't enough, you would have to look at images five times over of that. And this is going to result in just slaughtering innocent people, not to mention the excess mortality where hundreds of thousands of people are going to die as a result of this in the future. But even then, you would just be dealing with another Hamas-like group. Because if you don't understand what creates this problem to begin with, look, this is the problem. This happens all throughout history, all throughout the world. If you want, there's a reason why the Nazis only rose. First, it was after we imposed Versailles. But then, as you know, it was after the Great Depression, when there was hyperinflation. When things go terrible, that's when the worst, most violent extremist groups rise. Dennis, and that's what yeah. the future is going to be, unfortunately. Yo, Gamer G, you wonderful, wonderful lady. Thank you so much. Very briefly sure, to that. And Dennis can um, go. Um, yeah. Something really staggering has happened in Gaza since October 7th, which is there have been protests against Hamas for the first time in well there were protests actually recently in 2019 you know there there've been some staggering things happening in Israel the families of the hostages have been protesting the Israeli government for the first time like but they were quashed by Hamas in a very aggressive violent way but yeah almost like they're an evil terrorist organization lady yeah yeah Oh, oh, Hamas, a violent organization, violently quashed dissent? That's crazy. No one here is contending that Hamas are good or, like, you know, peaceful folks. It, it's a violent death cult of an organization. But the people of Gaza, the innocent people of Gaza, yes, who you mentioned, are speaking out against Hamas because Hamas. Hamas is stealing their food and their aid. And they are seeing, I mean, they've known all along the role Hamas plays in their oppression. But the fact that people, that Hamas has lost support in Gaza since October 7th, while gaining support massively in the West Bank, right? I mean, which speaks to how different the Palestinian populations are in the different areas. Um, I just don't buy it that Israel is is creating more and more Hamases and Hamases and Hamases. I, I think that there's evidence- So many Hamases. That actually the opposite is happening, that the people of Gaza are seeing, we have to get out of this cycle. Go ahead, Dennis. Damn, if only, Israel was in favor of a two-state solution or even a one-state solution. Damn, how are they going to get out of this cycle when literally the occupying power gives billions of dollars to their violent oppressors in order to keep Hamas in power? Because again, Benjamin Netanyahu literally bragged about funding Hamas. He is quoted as saying, 
you know, if you want to stop a two-state solution, fund Hamas. I hate to um, put it this way, so, but I, I mean it sincerely, so I will. You are on record now, because the Internet has a permanent memory. I'm aware. Of saying that there's no comparison morally between Hamas and the Nazis. No, no, no you the record, changed it. Well, you're no, on the yes, record. he's on the well, record. For the record, you, 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 changed, well, you changed what I said a little bit. Yeah, but yeah. Sure. No, 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 no. Yeah. Co- wait, so no, you, I didn't say that. You, you, wait, all right, you don't. So you think morally they are similar, yes or no? I d- I, you said I can't see anything different about them yes, except that the Nazis... Yes, and everyone knows no, listen, I was talking morally. Of course... What, no, no, Dennis, not everyone knows that you're talking about morally. That's Words matter. You talk slow enough to be picking them carefully, then use better ones. You, here's what's beautiful, Mr. Prager, Mr. Prager, what's beautiful about the Internet is what you just said. It is on record, so people can see what That's I correct. said, and then it they can see right. what you That's said. That's demagogic. That's right. Go ahead, sir. There is no That's moral demagog- difference between... It's demagogic to point out that it, there, is a, there is a record of this conversation. The Nazis and Hamas both want to exterminate hey, Jews. That is what we're talking about. Not whether or not the Hamas has taken over Czech... But again, like, Dennis, there are groups in the United States that want to exterminate Jews. Neo-Nazis in the United States still exist. They want to eliminate Jews. They talk about it all the time. They're protected by free speech in the United States. And, like, the existence of neo-Nazis in the United States is a problem. We have various ways of combating it, but notably the main way we choose not to combat these folks is by blowing up the places they live by like having drones just summarily execute them from the sky you know like there are plenty of groups around the world that are bigoted and desire the deaths of entire swaths of the population Like, there needs to be the ability to actually carry that out in order to justify, like, massive, overwhelming exterminationist violence. And Hamas does not have that capability. Czechoslovakia. That's an irrelevant point to what I made. There is no moral distinction. Hamas would like to butcher... Well, then, then you should have chosen your words more carefully, Dennis. Every Jew in Israel, maybe in the world, I don't know, but certainly in Israel, it's in their charter, and that's what they announced. They're proud of October 7th. They are proud of rape. They are proud of burning Jewish families. And the Nazis were proud, but the Nazis hid it, and Hamas boasts about it. That's the one difference. So I, I am very curious, because it kind of sounds like Dennis is saying that Hamas is actually worse than the Nazis. I I wonder if he if what what he attaches more moral weight to the hiding of the crime, or the uh, boasting of the crime. Because like, interestingly, I think he's actually making the argument that Hamas is worse than the Nazis, and I think that that's um. Oh boy, that's uh, an interesting argument to make, is what I will say about that. (laughs) Again, that's the one difference. See, you make the point again, that's not the one difference. There's other differences also. Go ahead, go ahead. This is Alice in Wonderland. If anybody watched- Jenk, oh God. I, it's so difficult to watch Jenk talk about politics now, knowing that he's like, open to voting for RFK Jr. and has, like, repeatedly tried to defend that god-awful position. As if RFK Jr. wouldn't, like, send, like, five times more aid to Israel and also allow U.S. uh, military to participate alongside them. Like, uh, he's literally said... RFK Jr. has literally said he's not in favor of any kind of ceasefire until Hamas is destroyed. And uh, I, I don't know, him, J- Jenk talking about how he's considering RFK Jr. because of Biden's stance on Israel. Um, 
really makes the rest of his advocacy in conversations like this make so much less sense to me. But he is at least seeming like he's bringing this back to a point of sanity. This debate and they didn't know what was happening in the world, they would think, oh my God, I guess Hamas is this giant power and it's been abusing Israel this entire time. Poor little tiny Israel and Hamas is this gigantic power crushing Israel. But have you considered that Israel is a birthday boy? Just a little birthday boy. Have you considered that though? What are you guys talking about? Hamas has got pea shooters. They did terrible damage on October 7th. Now Israel's done 30 times worse to the civilians. They've massacred civilians after civilians after civilians. Israel is, the, is Goliath. It is not David. It is the Germans in terms of military power. It is not the Jews. The Palestinians are the equivalent of the Jews during the Holocaust. They have been put into ghettos. Then they have said, you have no freedom. You will serve us and serve us only. And right now they're saying, it's true. Like travel, like if you're in the occupied territories, uh, you get different rights depending on like which part of the occupied territories you're in and even like which city you're in. You have different like travel rights. You have different marriage rights. Um, you have like so many different like 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 it's a it's an actual literal apartheid system where you have different rights because you're Palestinian because. You live in these areas. We're going to have permanent occupation. And are, wait, so were the Jews not supposed to fight back against the Germans? Do the Palestinians, right. hold on, hold on. Do the Palestinians not have a right to defend themselves? Does it only go one way, where Israel can crush, crush, crush? And how dare you lowly Palestinians fight back? How dare you? Now we'll kill 30 times more of you and we'll occupy you forever and ever and ever. And we're supposed to accept that? Are you guys nuts? They're never going to accept it. Never, ever. Bhatia, I love you, but you're, if you think that the Palestinians are now more anti-Hamas and more pro-Israel, you have lost your mind. True. They despise Israel and they will fight. And hold on, this is the most important point. They are going to fight Israel forever, not because they hate the Jews. Oh my God, they're Nazis. Oh, for no reason at all. They were just walking by and all these Jews came by and they hate them. No, they took their land and they still have it. They have them under their thumb. They can cut off the water, the power, the food, and they have, and they're starving them to death. And you think that, what, they just coincidentally hate the Jews and that's their driving ideology? No, they're fighting you because you're occupying them. This is the most obvious thing in the world. Why did the Armenians fight the Turks? Why did the Greeks fight the Turks? Why did everyone fight the Turks at the end of World War I and the end of the Ottoman Empire? Not because they hate the Turks, but because we were occupying them. And if the Greeks said we want to kill them all, which they did, that did not give us a right to go back into Greece, occupy Greece for 75 years and go, how dare you defend yourself? You hate Turks. We get to kill you forever. All right, all right we'll, we'll pick up on that because this is a legitimate question that I think Batya, since he named you, you can go ahead and ask. What does legitimate Palestinian self-defense, if there is such a thing even in your eyes, look like? Right. Well, so that's what I would ask Shank. Is everything that happened on October 7th legitimate resistance because the Palestinians so, are occupied? Great question. So I condemn Hamas for killing civilians. I also condemn the IDF for killing civilians. And now the IDF has killed 30 times the number of civilians that Hamas did. And I know you guys are going to dispute the numbers because that's a very classic thing that people on the well, oppressor how side do. How many Hamas soldiers okay. do you think have so, been killed? I just want a number. How many Hamas soldiers so, uh, do you think First of all, I, here's the thing. If somebody asked me that, my answer is I genuinely have no idea how many Hamas soldiers have been killed. I genuinely. But I don't think Israel knows either. I don't think the Gaza Health Ministry necessarily knows either. <laughs> like, I... The way Israel has been engaging and targeting uh, folk, pe like people in pe people in uh, Gaza, has been completely and utterly based on presumed affiliation from like spy <laughs> spy networks, essentially, and like they're just going on association. So, like, how how many of those people that they confirmed were Hamas? 
were actually members of Hamas and and not just like a family member of someone who was in Hamas or, you know, someone who worked in the bureaucratic government that made up the Hamas government. Like what? You, they, they have no idea. But we do know one thing, and that is how many children have been killed. We know that number. So we can take that number at the very least out of the equation. And that number is something around like 20,000. Like it's ridiculously high. So I don't know. You know, maybe some of those women were in Hamas. Maybe all of the men, all of the adult men who were killed were in Hamas. But I do know the one thing, and that is the majority of people killed in this conflict have been children. Specifically Palestinian children. And I know, and I'm sorry if this offends anybody, I don't believe those children were members of Hamas in any way that would justify you murdering them. German cow JJ, hello. In terms of the numbers, I go with what is internationally recognized by news organizations okay. and so human rights number? groups. How many Hamas so, and those have groups, been so those groups say no question that the health ministry, if anything, has been conservative, well over 33,000 dead overall. They do not know how many of those are Hamas. Israel yep. at one point made up a number well, like, Hamas hold on, 6, let me just finish. Let me just finish. Let me just finish. I'm almost I'll done. At one yeah. point, the IDF made up a number 13,000. And then a couple of weeks later, they changed it to 9,000. So it was obvious that it was made up. Do I trust the 9,000 number? No, because the IDF, everything they have said so far has been disproven by news organizations and human rights organizations. So I don't know what the number of Hamas it, it killed is, but it is a tiny number. And based on the numbers, even if you took the IDF numbers, the 9,000, Already, the civilian to military ratio is worse for the, significantly worse for the IDF than it was for Hamas. So if Hamas are dirty terrorists who went and killed those poor civilians along with the soldiers that they killed, well, then the IDF is also... So, sorry, my, my computer is doing some scanning and is occasionally going to make a little bloop sound, and I, I apologize about that. So obviously terrorists. Ahead, Shay, do you accept yeah. Hamas's number that 6,000 of its soldiers, would you accept Hamas's number that 6,000 of its soldiers have been killed? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay, so you believe... Do you, do you accept that Hamas's number? So, you know, like, that somehow makes it okay that if you, if you accept Hamas's number about that soldier count and you also accept their number about the total dead now, that would bring it to about 27 thousand women and children like c civilians elderly so somehow i i don't i don't think that that i don't think that's the counter argument you think it is lady believe hamas because they're gonna no, add, <laughs> no 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 i'm not i don't believe hamas i'm saying that at a minimum okay because hamas right, could be underestimating but they're not going to so overestimate six, six, i mean right, okay fine so well, well, i mean i sure. i sort of object morally to uh, taking hamas at its word and then assuming that the idea i object anyway, morally okay. at taking israel right. at its word so, but, well, so it's why, been a far why, worse why, oppressor let's get to an average how about yeah. you know eight thousand okay, uh, whatever let's it is move past the number what is the civilian to combatant ratio that you would have accepted in this war is it zero like it what is the it was i mean like how, I, here is here you know what you know what i'm i'm just gonna throw this just gonna throw this out there okay baseline if we're go if we're going by like the worst possible like standard like the lowest possible bar for like an acceptable response and an eye for an eye, you know, like, and, and that's me giving like, you know, like the gross, morally bad answer, right? Like, that's the lowest bar, right? Of like, what would be like an acceptable counterattack, you know? But we are so far beyond eye for an eye on this one. Like, th this is eye for... <laughs> Uh, eye for your soul, you know, like it's, it's, oh, you, you poked me in the eye. I'm going to, I'm going to murder your entire family and, uh, like invent an immortality potion so I can torture you for eternity. 
you know, they, we're we're on the level of like I have no mouth and I must scream levels of like horrific infliction of violence, you know? So like the the lowest possible like morally bad bar for like what would at the very least be an arguable proportionate response, acceptable response has already been so far thrust through the ground. Civilian to combatant ratio that you would have accepted as moral and just. So when you look at the scope of uh, conflicts across the world, not in the past, but in this day and age, after World War II and the law of war crimes were put into place, there are, generally speaking, some ratios that people find awful but acceptable. It's usually well under two to one. So, for example, America would not drop 2,000 pound bombs. They wouldn't even drop 500 pound bombs in Fallujah. Hey, when they were cornered. Israel's wantonly dropping 2,000 bombs all over the place and that is why they have a worse civilian to military what ratio kill ratio accept? than hamas what so do you ratio? acknowledge okay, let me ask you back do you acknowledge that israel's worse terrorists than hamas because they're killing more civilians both no, as a raw no, number and no as a shank, ratio no so, shank, because... to, let's get to what the point that he's trying jesus um real quick folks just gotta do a top of the hour ad break we've been going for about two hours now if you've been I don't want to say enjoying this, but finding it maybe cathartic or informative uh, or interesting. Uh, please consider hitting the follow button over on Twitch. Hit the subscribe button on YouTube. And remember to like the YouTube stream. Liking the YouTube stream means more people will see it. The more engagement the stream gets, the more uh, folks get to see it. You know, the more it gets recommended. Um so hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and also consider gifting memberships on YouTube, uh, subscriptions over on riverboat.gg, which is the on-screen chat here, for those of you who are new. Um, you can watch ad-free over there. You get a bunch of emotes. And uh, consider gifting subs or donos, because uh, that is what allows me to make this type of content. Um, without you guys, I would have to like go and find a f another full-time job, and uh, that would be difficult, to say the least. <sighs> 70 of you have not liked. True. Get, get, get up on that, okay? Also, consider dropping those subs and donos, folks. Not, uh, I'm not, uh, not pointing any fingers here, but uh, so, far, so far this stream, been going for two hours. We've made approximately $5 an hour. So if you're enjoying the stream, please consider dropping those subs and donos because they, they mean a lot to my ability to pay rent and continue being alive. Um, I'm going to go to the bathroom really quick. We're going to have a little bit of a musical interlude, and then we will return because this is a very dense back and forth. Uh, <laughs> this will be, be a doozy, and I knew that going in. Uh, BRB, folks.
everybody <laughs> and horizon thank you for gifting elanita express a tier one sub you have now brought the stream total up to 15 dollars, and i appreciate you goddamn legends Woo! all right that was fun. Uh, thanks for taking that little dance break with me. You know, I feel like we need to keep up the energy because, um, fra oh God, frankly, remember how at the beginning of this, I said that this was a two hour long debate. We're only 30 minutes into it. <laughs> Also, only dogs can judge me. Thank you for the 1,000 biddies bringing us up to a whole five subs. You know what? I'm going to keep track of how many subs you guys get. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on screen as a counter. Maybe something special will happen when you reach a number.
There we go. Five subs out of... Huh? There we go. That was a lot louder than I meant to uh, to make it. I, I'm sorry. That's a, that was a lot louder of a sound that came out of my mouth. <laughs> and we'll do a little outline so it's easy to see. And we'll bold it. Psychology? Mm-hmm. That's true. Let's see here. Copy this. Copy. Paste as a link source. Move that over here. Maybe make it, nah, we can leave it that size. All right, what's in the box? I don't know what's in the box, chat. You'll have to find out. I'm, that's right, I'm JJ, I'm JJ abrams in you, you motherfuckers. It, I, I understood it as a seven reference, but I turned it into JJ Abrams advertising mystery box reference instead. You look nice and green. Thank you so much, Cross Crescent Creed. Does this count as five subs? Metal Kitty Mom, it does count as five subs. Thank you for the $25 dono. Carrying the stream on your shoulders. <laughs> 25 subs? Nah, you're not going to trick me that easy. You got to get up a little bit earlier in the morning to pull that over on old Riverboat Jack. Zoigs, Jack. The subs be increasing. That's my. That was my attempt to do a shaggy voice, and I'm never gonna attempt that again. Moving right along. <clears throat> you know, we gotta have a little bit of fun when we're when we're interspersing with brain rot that makes us angry. You know, we gotta we gotta sprinkle some sp some some seasoning on this. Okay. I'm too curious about the box, as you should be. As a cat, they're my natural enemy. <laughs> All right, moving, moving right along. Let's get back to this debate. Let's 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 do that. Oh, there we go. Oh God. There we go. Fixed it. Boom. I'm trying to make is what does a what does legitimate defense on the Israeli parts look like? And this is actually something I'd like to hear but from that, the Palestinian part. Well, we get to both. Oh, He's, I'm sorry. Jake okay, asked about the Israeli part. Well, so we're talking I, about it's, it's, it, I don't believe that you don't distinguish between intentionally targeting, intentionally targeting women with rape, babies, children. Families intentionally being dismembered. I don't believe that you think that. I, again, this is not a unique evil. Like, the IDF has also been doing that to Palestinian families at alarmingly high rates. That is morally equivalent to an army that is targeting combatants. That's hilarious. You no. think those are the same moral? Well, no, 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 don't put words in my mouth. Let me just say. Yo. You finally get home and you decide to relax by watching a program about who gets the box? What's in the box? How much is what's in the box worth? Storage wars. 
Elanita Express, thank you for the $5 dono. Bringing us up to 11. 11 subs. Ele Eleanor, thank you for the compliment. And uh, I'm glad that... I, I think I look pretty good in yellow. Address that. I'll no, I have to address that. I'm saying you... Do I don't believe that you think those are the same. No, no. First of all... No, J Jenk's just going to say he disagrees with the premise of your question. Like, he, he just disagrees that that is cor correct. Like, you're, you're saying that, like, the IDF is the most moral military in the world. They would never kill an innocent civilian unless they absolutely had to. And it's just like, that's... We know that's not true. We know that the premise that you're trying to convey is just faulty from the get-go. We're, we're talking about two different things here. So when you say, hey, do you condemn and do you find it morally acceptable that they killed the children and the raped, et cetera? Of course not. That is totally morally unacceptable. But if you say, hey, Israel does not target civilians, that is, I'm sorry, but I think it's a comical okay. point of view. I'm gonna, I'm gonna and so they definitely, and by the way, this is really important, though. When Hamas kills a baby, we all condemn it. Israel has now killed uh, 15,000 children. And you know what they did? They crushed their skulls they lit them on fire and they burned them to death and you know how they did that with 2,000 okay, pound bombs I do answer on, the legitimate okay. and they did it on purpose wrap, wrap this okay, up and I, then I, I want to get to Dennis question. as well um, and Dave because they both haven't had a chance um, to talk about it. Uh, resistance that targets if Hamas had only targeted military we would be having a totally different conversation Agreed. I am not entirely convinced of that I think Netanyahu is looking for an excuse to do exactly this. Okay. I, I, yeah, I think we would. Yeah, we would agree on that. Yeah. Um, resistance that happens in the West Bank that is nonviolent. I have a very dear friend who is the head of a nonviolent resistance movement in the West Bank. His life is impossible because of the double standard, the double legal standard between Palestinians. Yeah, yeah. It, it's almost like you're pointing out that like there is no uh, other. There, there aren't other options available if you're. A, if you're a peace advocate as a Palestinian in like the Gaza Strip and you're at all effective, you get assassinated. <laughs> like you get an IDF sniper round through the forehead. And Israelis, which is unconscionable. Um, of well, course, that is, I, I that is totally, you that. I know, you yeah. don't know anything about me. No, I just, no, just, about I just said I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate you acknowledging but, um, that. Take, take the compliment. Um, <laughs> um, th that is totally legitimate resistance. Military targets, nonviolent resistance, BDS. I don't like it. I find it offensive. I find it a double standard, whatever. I support the right of people to resist through boycotts. That's like a, a time-honored American tradition. These are all legitimate forms. We're using rape as a tool of war, not legitimate. And we all agree on that, by the way. Okay. So I, I don't think we, we disagree about this. It's just when you say that the occupation led to October 7th, it sounds like you're saying that it is justified by the oppression. But that's not, but that's one just, second. Okay, sorry, sorry. Sorry. No. They're just saying that these are the material conditions that led to this outcome. The same way, like, you beat a dog every day, you can't really be that surprised when it suddenly bites you. You know, like, that's, that's kind of, that's the, that's the point. The point isn't that it justifies it. The point is that it makes it understandable. It makes, like, you, you, you are suddenly able to understand the cause and effect, you know? Because it didn't come out of nowhere. There was a cause and there was an effect. I want to get back to, so I asked originally what legitimate Palestinian self-defense, if it even it exists in your mind, looks like, and I would like for Dennis to be able to Legitimate play. Palestinian yeah. self-defense would be, we no longer want to destroy Israel, let's make peace. They were offered a state five times and they rejected it. Bill Clinton thought that Arafat was a phony and he did everything possible at Camp David to give them a state. Okay, they don't want a state. They want to destroy Israel. Hmm, that that's so weird, Dennis, because it the, the people who've destroyed the Oslo Accords are are people like Netanyahu, who has openly bragged about how he undermined the Oslo Accords. And as regards Palestinians, how's this that no, that none of you <sighs> like to talk about? There are two million Palestinians in Israel as Israeli citizens with the same rights as Jews have in Israel, and not only they, that, they 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 don't they you know. I haven't looked into this extensively. They might have the same rights on paper, but much like under Jim Crow, there were there are laws in place. There are all kinds of uh, like systemic discriminations against Palestinians within Israel. 
you know, notably, uh, there are entire neighborhoods that won't sell houses to Palestinians because they want to maintain the Jewish character um, of themselves. Again, explicitly, it's called a, a, a Jewish state because they don't want to annex the territory to change the character of the Jewish state by suddenly introducing millions of Palestinians. That's literally one of the explicit state, like, like, like explicit reasons they've given in the past. That they're pro-Israel. They are more pro-Israel since October 7th than they have ever been, and that is according to Arab sources in Israel. They're occupied. Uh, why aren't they occupied? Why are two million Arabs in Israel so happy to be in Israel? Why? Answer that question. Well, I'll, I'll, if Israel I'll, wants to commit genocide okay. against, uh, you say genocide all well, the time. Ivan, so why are, okay, so why, are, why, are me, why are, if no, you're going to ask me a question. No, I'm asking you, ask? you both. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, you were looking yes, at me and you yeah, pointed that, at me. That, that's so fair I'm gonna, enough. I'm gonna, I, I don't distinguish between will, the two of you. Okay, I will quote your debate <laughs> partner. You don't know anything about me. Um, I have oftentimes said that it is true that I, I would certainly say that I do think, well, I wouldn't say they have exactly equal rights, the Arab citizens of Israel, if you were to be a random Arab citizen of any country in, in the Middle East, I think you'd rather be a citizen of Israel than, than a citizen of, okay. of anywhere else. That is important. I 100% agree. That is important. And let me tell you something. If you were going to be a citizen in the United States of America or under Saddam Hussein's Iraq, you would much rather be a citizen in the United States of America. That doesn't justify the war in Iraq. That's the point. It is important. I give Israel a lot of credit. Israel is a great country. By the way, I think the entire Zionist experiment is really amazing when you think about it, that a group of Eastern European Jews sat down and said, we've been through so much that we want to form our own country in a land that we've never been to. We want to base it around a language that we don't speak. We want to get international financing. We want to get all this. And they pulled it off. They actually did it, and they made it a really great place to live for the people who are citizens of Israel. That I mean, I don't necessarily have the idea in my head that they made it a really great state. I, I mean, again, <laughs> I, I, feel like, I feel like he's glossing over a lot of the founding here, a, a lot of the uh, ex, you know, ethnic cleansing. That's yes. not really what's in dis and, and a lot of the, you know, wealth derived from land seizures. <laughs> God. Butte. The point is that there are five million people who are under land that they've controlled since 1967. And it is. Yeah, not like. Again, the libertarian in this conversation is going to be saying shit. I, I'm. I guess I'm not surprised to finally hear him say something like, you know, man, black people should be grateful for slavery because they're so much better off now. Like, God damn, dude. Certain point, you can't just claim it. Like, I've heard people argue this isn't even really an occupation at this point. This is an annexation. They've taken this land and they've basically said at do you least, agree that at they least were given since the state five times. In no, I do not. No, 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 I do not. And I'll, okay. I'll respond to that. Uh, yeah, again. The, it's Dennis Dennis feigning as if he's not familiar with like the concept of a poison pill in negotiations. Because okay, right, fine. So, so let me res God God knows he talks about Adam and Eve a lot on his show. Like my God, you'd you'd think if anyone would understand like a poisoned pill or a I don't know primordial root of sin or something, it would be the guy talking about Adam and Eve stories all the time. But you know whatever respond to that yeah. so you just said that you were talking about camp david camp david 2 in right. 2000 you said arafat was offered everything and he turned it down two things i'll say on that real quick okay number one shlomo ben -Ami, who was the acting foreign minister at the time in these negotiations he said himself in his book and he said it on an interview in democracy now that if he was uh if he was arafat he'd have turned the deal down too and i highly recommend one book that i'll recommend for everyone to read the truth about camp david written by clayton swisher this guy was a security guard there. He went around, interviewed everybody involved for three years after the fact. I highly recommend people 
read that book. The truth is that, yes, Bill Clinton threw Arafat under the bus after the negotiations, yeah, but no, Arafat, Arafat, wanted to, Arafat wanted to continue the negotiations. The Israelis said no, and the Americans said no. That's a fact. Okay. Go ahead, Dennis. If you have yeah, no, no. Yeah. The, the, uh, okay, so this is, a, is an excellent example. I, I, my motto on my 40 years of radio has been, I prefer clarity to agreement. We don't agree, but it is clear. You think the security guard at Camp David is a, is a reliable source, and Clinton made it up that Arafat was responsible for rejecting I it. Don't think that Bill Clinton, majority... I don't think that Jeffrey Epstein's rapist friend is a reliable source. Oh, okay, yes, fine. agreed. Okay. At the time, I he... actually do. You know, f fair on that one. Do you trust Clayton yes. Swisher? Yes. 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 Okay, sources. that's fine. Okay. Uh, he, uh, I don't like Clinton at all, but Clinton, I knew I'd get you on that Clinton, one. <laughs> well, you didn't get me. We happen to agree about yeah. Clinton's moral character as it, as it developed. Certainly, sure. he, that. Okay, but he the would issue. Never lie. No, no, no. He. he okay. So you, your your claim is that they were not offered a state. Is that correct? Tell me yes or no. It's I don't not, I want to understand. Well, it's not what? yes or no answer. It's not that they weren't offered a state. Yeah. It's that what they were offered, and by the way, we can listen to Netanyahu when he doesn't realize he's being recorded, and he's bragging about how much he fooled Bill Clinton because he put all these poison pills in the agreement. And they Damn. What, what did I tell you on that one, folks? They even used the same phrase. Therefore, they would never really get a state. What they offered right. them was nothing that really looks like a state. It, it, it was, you yes. can have technically 96% of it, but there's Israeli controls all throughout it, and all these different okay. sections are so, divided right. against so, each so other. So here's the big picture. I'll, I'll be very, very quick. The average Israeli would do anything to get the hell out of the West Bank and to have peace with their neighbors. The, the, there is, that is what Israelis care about. They want to raise their kids. They want to have peace. They want to have prosperity. They want to keep uh, producing uh, the, the most advanced medicines in the world, as, as the Israeli That's medical right. industry that does. The they Israeli. don't want. Sorry. They don't want to occupy Arabs. The Damn, that, that's crazy because they've been doing it for like the the, the last like hundred years. <laughs> It was forced hey, upon them. It. it was forced upon them in 1967. And one final key point: Pal the, the Hamas and Hezbollah and Iran and others all say. All is he is he just going to say that like the Nakba that like the Nakba wasn't a result of like a sudden a sudden occupation? Like, what what are you doing, Dennis? Where where are you going on this journey? All of Israel is occupied land, not the West Bank, not Gaza. Israel is an is occupied Palestinian land. Jenkins, there is that is what from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free means. No Israel. All right, I'm glad you brought that up. We will be getting to the free speech topic on that. Jenkins. I, I would just like to point out that, again, both sides in this conflict use that as a rallying cry from the river to the sea. Everything will be Israeli. Like, that's one of the things that gets that that gets thrown out. Both sides use that phrase. Like, the, uh, again, Dennis, in the in these types of conversations, acts like it is unique to Palestinians that. uh you know, oh, they're using these phrases. Israel uses the same phrase. Now, you might also like, I and I, I subscribe to this. There's more nuance in it. You know, the meaning of a phrase can change over time. And maybe when it was used in like 19, you know, 68, maybe it meant something a bit different than today. When, uh, from my understanding, a lot of Palestinians would be in favor of a two-state solution. The people here who are not in favor of a two-state solution are Netanyahu and Likud and the, uh, and the various uh, settler organizations that push for more and more settlements. You haven't been able to speak. I saw you objecting about the occupation, so yeah, go ahead. There's so many things yeah. to object to. Look, guys, I I'm not on either side in the sense that 
I want every Israeli uh, civilian to be protected. I want every Palestinian civilian to be protected. And as a Turk, I'm in kind of the middle here as well, because we also occupied Palestine. We occupied a lot of people, right? So I've been on the Israeli side, and oftentimes when I hear you guys talk, you sound a lot like my Turkish relatives, to be honest. <laughs> and that's not a great compliment, because, and I love my Turkish relatives. Sorry, guys. But when you talk about anything that's related to Turkey, Turks are the most angelic, creatures that's ever existed. They never did anything wrong to anybody. Golly gee, them occupying. No, those people wanted to be occupied, et cetera, et cetera, right? So looking at it, when, when I look at those peace negotiations, for example, I think that in the beginning, Israel was uh, honestly terrible and violated almost every peace treaty they made. In the middle, they were pretty good. And then at the end now with Netanyahu over the last 20, 25 years, they've been awful, okay? So in the middle where they were good, it's actually not the Camp uh, David Accords and, and the 2000 negotiations. Uh, there's other sources. There's one of the lead American negotiators. I believe his name was Robert Malley. Uh, I hope I got that right. He said, oh, this was a fraud. We never really uh, presented a real state to the Palestinians. Jimmy Carter said the same thing. So, but o Omer actually o offered a pretty decent deal to Abbas if it was a real deal. And I think that he should have taken that. I even think that the, the deal in 2000, it was not great. But they should have tried harder. Arafat should have tried harder to take that deal because I remember covering it at the time and thinking, guys, I don't think you get it. You have no leverage. America is going to cheat on the side of Israel from time immemorial. They have the greatest military in the history of the world. You guys have no leverage. Just take any deal because you're going to be occupied forever. So I want them to take a deal. I want it to be diplomatic, okay? But in the beginning, yeah, but like this idea that Israel is just, oh my God, they just offered everything. And these Arabs, they just always reject peace. That's ridiculous. After 1967, by the way, one of the uh, peace treaty was, hey, Egypt, Syria, Jordan, uh, especially Egypt and Jordan, recognize Israel. And then Israel was supposed to give back the Sinai Peninsula. And it didn't. And that's what led to the 1973 war. So this, these kind of violations have happened over and over again. So in terms, and I've got to clarify something that Dennis keeps saying. There's a difference between genocide and Holocaust. So is Israel trying to do a Holocaust of the Palestinians or Muslims or Arabs? No. They're not trying to kill every Muslim or Arab or Palestinian in the world. But that's not what a genocide is. Serbanisa was a genocide. That was 6,000 Muslims. Again, great, great comparison here. Cenk is actually making like, a really good argument. I, I, I appreciate it. It's nice to hear him not be bad. He was killed by the Serbs. They were killed because they were Muslim in the area that they were in, so they were targeted based on their race. The same with the Armenian genocide. Genocide right. means targeting based on race and usually ethnic cleansing. That is textbook what is happening in West Bank right now. And so you, when you talk about, uh, you know, the Hamas and the Palestinian Authority, Netanyahu wanted to split those two things up so that he could say, and this is, by the way, in the Israeli press, Times of Israel, Haaretz, etc. And the idea there is so that Netanyahu and the right-wingers in Israel can go, oh, we have no negotiating partner. We have Fox no partner bet. for peace because I don't know which one it is. And I You've redeemed the daddy, I see. You, you don't want you don't want the daddy. What did you want? Hey, Kiwi TP. Oh, dead domain. I just see it. I just saw it that you raided in. Hello, everybody. Uh, we're covering Jenk Uger and Dennis Prager debate various aspects of uh, the you know genocide in Gaza and the. Uh, making basically we're making fun of an old an old crotchety racist okay like that's that's what we're doing and frankly it's just kind of good fun and cathartic but also like i don't know we're, we're talking about a pretty serious conflict so i, I just want to give you guys a heads up on that Um, welcome, folks. If you don't know who I am, my name's Riverboat Jack. I talk about the news and politics, and uh, I do political organizing professionally, and uh, also, yeah. I, I guess we're five minutes away from Happy 420, if any of you uh, partake. And uh, 
Yeah, get get a get a drink, get a snack, we're get cozy. We're gonna be here for a while. Did you see the Trump trial thing? Did I did I see that Donald Trump has quote putrid unquote farts? Yes, I did. I did see that. It was the best thing I've seen in a long time in the news. Just just you know, no old old, old number farty two over there. Old number farty two. Hey, Boiled Peanuts, happy 420 to you as well. You 420'd. I may have pre-gamed a little. Um, you were meaning the thing that happened outside the trial? Oh, yeah, the, the fucking crazy person who self-immolated outside of the, the Trump trial. Dude threw a bunch of uh, leaflets in the air and uh, immolated himself in the American flag and uh, I, I've now read what the conspiracy theory is, and it's basically uh, just connecting like a bunch of like things like crypto scams, uh, Peter Thiel's banks, um, uh, the COVID, the economic crash uh, that accompanied COVID, uh, the Simpsons uh, being able to predict, predict various events, uh, and like several other things to basically try and make an argument that uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump were both actually part of the same team and they're currently working together to do a fascist coup of America, everybody. And that's, and over that he decided he would burn himself alive. So uh, again, the conspiracy singularity is strong and should never be underestimated. Like, it, it will literally get so intense for people at its epicenter that they will kill themselves. Dead Domain had a look at his substack earlier. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Like, he even knows how crazy it is because he, like, prefaces it by, like, saying, I know this will all sound like a crazy conspiracy theory, but it's true. And like, not, no, no, it's not. It, it's not, bud. I'm, I'm really sorry you got that brain sick. Dude had, had the mental illness. Yeah, he, dude, dude had the mental illness, the primordial mental illness, the one that, from, from which all other mental illnesses come. Yeah. Uh, Archangel the Cub. Yeah. And Loki Fox. I'm still going to do it because you did redeem it. Oh, so did Fox of Fat. Uh, Fox Bat. I'm sorry. I there's another, there's another user called Fox of Fate, and I combined your two names. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, daddy. And a second one. Daddy. There you go. You, I, I, the pact is sealed. Oh, wooga! Anyway. <laughs> Since we're already paused, remember to hit the follow button on Twitch, hit the, hit the like button on YouTube, sub hit the subscribe button. Chat, we're getting so close to 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. We got new content going up every day. Get the fuck over there. Hit the subscribe button, okay? And additionally, consider dropping some subs or donos. Once we hit an arbitrary number that is unknown to you, uh, I, 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 something will happen. Who knows what will happen? I'm not telling you. Maybe if you're a clever, a clever weasel, you might be able to figure it out, but maybe not. Um, I love arbitrary numbers. Show how much you love it, love them by donating. Otherwise, your love is hollow. <laughs> uh, mm. Oh, and I'm seeing some other things are being redeemed. Oh, mommy. Remember when my stream was so much hornier? I do. Pepperidge Farm remembers. 
Hey, Glitch Master. Do five arm curls. Oh, God damn it. One, two, three, four, five. Hornier? <laughs> y'all y'all just pressing buttons. I, I see you guys. Y'all y'all just pressing buttons over on Twitch. I Roses see you. are red. What's in the box? All I know is Riverboat Jack Rocks. Well, thank you. I you you combined poetry with giving me money. Two of my favorite things. Thank you for the ten dollar dono, Horizon. Let's go. Also, I I do enjoy it when like text to speech says nice things. It, it it's it's nice to hear. Yeah. <sighs> also, <laughs> yeah, Stout Man, you got to you got to you got to be clever with your uh emote combos. You got to you got to space them out correctly. It takes a lot of planning. It's the ultimate chatter maneuver. <sighs> I'm now reminded of how my redeeming of put glasses on was not possible when you didn't stream at home. So I'm questioning you to, I'm requesting you to do arm curls to compensate since you're already wearing your glasses. You know what? My sense of honor compels me to it. Adhere to your request. All right. Another five. One, two, three, four, five. five. Whew. You guys? I'll just tell you guys, because I'm kind of proud of it. I'm one pound away from having lost 20 pounds. I'm real excited. I'm excited to meet that goal. Let's go. Thank you for your honor. You're welcome. Based? Very based. And I'm currently on track to be my goal weight in time for my latex event so I can be uh, even sexier in my latex. I'm very, I'm very excited to properly fit my latex outfit. <sighs> Wait, latex? Yeah, I, I, I go to a, a latex uh, fashion event and I tend, I tend to try and dress up and look good and it's uh, it's pretty fun to get dressed up. Uh you can see my my outfit my outfit from last year is my pinned tweet on uh Twitter. Anyway. Better latex than never. Boo, Vijo, boo. What if you had a latex fetish but were allergic to latex? Then you better get some good anti-allergens. If you stream in a latex nun outfit, all I'm saying is that it'd be kind of neat. Hey, look, if somebody wants to find me a good latex nun outfit, I'd consider it. Anyway, moving on. Wait, wait, what? Yeah, also Lily Love stuff. I people need permission to break their diets every once in a while and birthdays and you know holidays good excuses 
Never feel guilty. Is that stuff not custom made? Um, you can have it custom made, and it is best if it is custom made, but there are a lot of websites that sell uh, latex outfits. Like, um, a good a good place for, like, cheap, relatively quality latex is a website called Libidex. But, yeah. <laughs> Need a nun outfit that doesn't break? Yeah, my, my last, my last uh, sexy nun outfit broke. My, my ass got too fat for it. And to be fair, it was one glorious last photo shoot, but I do miss it. Oh, Eleanor. I, act I actually really like the sensation of latex on my skin. So, like, for, for me, I totally understand having texture revulsions. I understand that. But for me, it, it, it feels nice. Yeah, like libido, but with an X instead, an EX instead of O. Libidex. It does tend to be very, very expensive, though. It, like, it, it is an expensive hobby to get into. Which is why I only have, like, an outfit and a half. All right, let's go. The outfit simply could not contain that much power. True! Anyway, remember, like, comment, subscribe, follow, drop subs and donos or memberships on YouTube. Let's go. We're we're going we're going back in. Fun fact about eating habits and cheat days: if you're consistent about calorie consumption, a single day of excessive calories will not fully process and won't negatively impact weight. Really, if you keep within fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred calories every day, then a buffet day won't mean much. That's cool. All right, neat. Do all the engagement. Give me all of the money. I'm the captain now. Let's go. I know. Is it Palestinian Authority? Is it Hamas? Oh, look, Hamas is attacking us. Can, I, can you believe they're attacking us after 75 very, years of very occupation? Quickly, Dave, but then I want to get to Bacha. Okay, well, yeah. I know, wait, 75 yeah. years of occupation. That is exactly the view. I'm glad you said it. That is the view. Israel ex it itself is occupying Palestinian. It has nothing to do with the West Bank and nothing to do with Gaza. No, no, okay. You I don't said want... 75 years. That's how old Israel is. Yeah, so, oh, okay. but I, well, you, okay. can I clarify? No, because I want two-state solution. I want Israel to be a safe haven. But, but then, so what does right. 75 years of right, occupation the, the mean? Okay, so years let's go not, 67. Okay. What difference does it make? Oh, that it's is. a so big I just, difference. Well, I, I just want to notice, because as you're pointing out the strategy of Netanyahu to, to prop up Hamas, Hamas, which is widely reported, and I saw you nodding at that. I think there's no denying it at it's this so point. Much worse but it's but that. Well, hold on. But well, hold on. and humiliated Hamas at the same time. Right, So, but let's let's talk about this a little bit, because I think this all kind of ties together here, and it's one of the points that Dennis just made, where you said, look, Israelis don't want to occupy these territories. And that certainly is true. This is my point about being collectivist versus individuals. That is true for many, many Israelis. There are lots of them who were, were very happy. They were all behind Yitzhak Rabin. Let's make a deal. We don't want to be occupying these guys anymore, right? But then there's also members of the Likud party and people like Benjamin Netanyahu. And one of the explicit reasons, which he has stated in his own words and many high level of uh, uh, Israelis, I could read quotes to you guys for the next hour if you want. They've all said it. The reason why they wanted to prop up Hamas was not only, as Cenk said, so that the international community would never recognize Palestinians, but so that those Israeli citizens wouldn't be able to put pressure on them. Because if it was the PA in charge, so many people in Israel would say, hey, they want to make a deal, let's make a deal. And so the Likud party cynically, intentionally, funded and propped up this terrorist organization that is every bit as bad. True. True. Likud has been funding Hamas for decades. And as you've said, Mr. Prager, I agree with you on that. But, they, but a two state solution will not work. Why not? I, I think it could. I think it could definitely work. 
here's the deal, right? So if that's true, which we all know is true, if that's true that the Likud party propped up Hamas so they wouldn't face internal pressure and they wouldn't face external pressure to give the Palestinians their freedom, then I'm sorry, that blows up the Israeli defense for this war, that, hey, it sure does suck that we got to kill these innocent people, but we got to get these Hamas. You propped up Hamas so that these innocent people would never get their freedom. You don't then get to use that group as an excuse for why you can slaughter them. Well, sorry, for, no reason. Reasonable for person can record, defend that. For the, for the record, so that everyone knows, it was the Palestinian Authority before the word Hamas was ever known that murdered all the members of the Israeli Olympic team in the Munich 72 that is Olympics. True. That this, this portrayal of the Palestinian Authority minus Hamas as wonderful people is sick. That no no one's saying that uh, again, there's no one's saying they're saints, Dennis. That the same way the people who run the Israeli government are not saints and have like horrific like assassination programs for for civilians and their families in Gaza like yeah they're not saints either okay no no one is if you're assuming sainthood on a state level Dennis you are just incorrect whatever happened to Yitzhak Rabin very very interesting question there hypervisor no, okay. but that's no, but the point is they change. Yeah, but the point is, is see, but this is such a cheap. Sorry, so, 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 that's such a cheap cop. That's okay. such a cheap cop yeah. out. Is Riverboat a Hassanabi head? Oh, Hassanabi head. Um, I don't know what that means. Am, am I aware of Hassan? Yeah. Yeah to point to one atrocity oh, in history. Oh, wait, it is oh, an oh, atrocity. All the blown up buses, all the blown up schools. The, what are what you happened talking in the Nasser Diana? That, that, that was all P.A. Okay, so yeah. Good night, Melanie. Yeah. 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 But I'm sorry, yeah. all right, right. Cigar, 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 can I just say one thing? Murder just one thing quickly. Sorry, all right. To just point to one atrocity and then say get out of jail free card. I think it is objectively true that there has been atrocities that have been committed by the PLO and also by members, not necessarily of the Israeli government, but certainly yes, Israeli the Israeli paramilitary Israeli organization, Much sometimes worse. the Israeli government uh, as well. I mean, Batya, I do want to get the response. I do want to get the response to this uh, whenever it comes to the genocide question, because that's one that is very hot. Well, the thing is about having uh, a state is that they would actually have to, like, declare war. Um, there would be more diplomatic consequences as a result of, like, invading a state. Like, there's a lot more on the line diplomatically, geopolitically, when you are invading a state, you know, as opposed to, like, territory you already occupy. Um, but also, yeah, a two-state solution isn't going to fix the Israeli government's hatred for Palestinians, but no no nothing is. That that's not, that's not something that's going to change, you know likely anytime soon um but like a, if Palestine, if palestinians were granted statehood if palestine was granted statehood um i imagine that a lot of the uh implementation of said statehood would be backed by the un and like an international coalition of like you know white hats essentially Pe people to uh keep the uh israeli uh, idf and uh any kind of militant militant military wing of whatever government arises uh from like getting into a kerfuffle but like yeah obviously in a two-state solution there would need to be like diplomatic guarantees Right now, specifically for the American audience, this is a key point of the intra-left debate around Joe Biden and his candidacy. So, Baja, I would love... Wait. In American English, what does the word guileless mean? Used in a sentence, when Anne met Norman nearly a decade before his death, he struck her as happy and attractive, guileless but determined. Basically, like, without lie. You know, like, without without, like, the inclination to lie. Palestine almost joined the UN, right? I could be wrong. Um, no, Terra Nova, you're correct. Uh, they were gaining steam for uh, official statehood recognition by the UN, but uh, the United States 
holds a position on the Security Council, which in the UN basically just means that uh, any country on the Security Council can veto unilaterally anything that they don't like. So the United States vetoed uh, Palestinian statehood the other day. We talked about it a bit. No, the Holy Land is mine, actually, mentality will just not work long term. I, I mean, the, the thing is, no, no state policy works long term. The, if you if you like ex expand like the, the, the timeline of what you're talking about, all states run into problems eventually, you know, all, all things, you know, change, they develop, they move on, they morph, they evolve. Um, and honestly, the reality is we get, we get, we try and we push for the best we can get right now. And it's going to change in the future and it could change for the better and it could change for the worse. But like, all we can do is try to make it better now. I'm kind of anti-border. I mean, well, yeah, same. I'm, an I'm an anti-statist. I don't believe states should exist, but like, that's something I, I don't really advocate for in the immediate term because there's not you know I, I want a stateless classless moneyless society you know but like states are old 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 institutions and I think first we have to get rid of uh, you know class then money and then states states are probably going to be the last thing to go <laughs> But yeah, states bad. I don't like them. I like democracy. I don't like states. Um, I'd like for you to respond and to make the case around why Israel is or is not committing a genocide. We'll stick on this question and we'll get some responses from over here as well. So, Baja, go ahead. I don't believe Israel is committing a genocide, um, precisely because of how Shank d defined the word genocide, which is the intentional targeting of a people based on their ethnicity or their race. And that's clearly not happening here. I mean, um, really? first of we'll get to Just real quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're not they're not trying to um they're it's not like they're trying to like remo systematically remove Palestinians from that land. It's not it's not like they're trying to systematically remove Palestinians from uh the territory they occupy. Anyway, <laughs> Right. Aren't you curious okay, what I'm going to say? You're, right, you're up soon, but, but Dave is next. Is right, um, you know, they're not being targeted because they're Muslims or Arabs or Palestinians. They're being targeted because Hamas has embedded itself Hamas. within a civilian population, right? None of us would accept, I hope, that if they had only killed let's say 6,000 Hamas terrorists, that that would be a genocide, right? We would understand that that was a military campaign to rid Israel of a danger threatening to its, its civilians. These people who have been killed have been killed as a result of Israel's attempt to eradicate Hamas. And so to suggest that they are being targeted because of their race, or I mean, we don't believe that. We know that that's not the case. We know that if they were Palestinians living in Israel or living in Jordan, Israel would not be committing, they would not be dying as a result of Israel's actions. Um I weirdly am disliking this lady far more than Dennis Prager. Um, and furthermore, you can point to all of the ways in which Israel has tried to move the civilian population out of the way. They moved a million people out of northern Gaza into Khan Yunis and into Rafah and into southern Gaza to get them out of the way. Now I see you smiling. You're yeah, and, then, and bombed them on the way and then bombed them in those cities and then is planning a ground invasion into Rafah and uh, there's nowhere else for them to go. And... Uh, then there were reports that they were being told to go back to northern Gaza, and then they were fired upon for going back to northern Gaza. Wow. What the fuck is this lady on? This lady's on propaganda. 
probably thinking to yourself, oh, she's proving my point, it's ethnic cleansing. But here's the yes. point. I mean, it's either, you can, the ethnic cleansing charge and the genocide charge are a little bit um, um, contradictory, right? Okay. Because if they were trying to commit a genocide and get, could just simply, you know, eradicate the world of, the, of Gaza's Muslim population, surely they would not be moving civilians out of harm's way while they're trying to get rid of the presence of Hamas so, in a certain place or not. Yeah, surely, surely they wouldn't be aware that people are going to be watching what they're doing. Surely they, they would simply just do their crimes instead of trying to create a, a narrative that justifies their eliminationist rhetoric. Wow. I, I just, like... Surely would have, we would have just pressed the murder them all button instead of moving them around to different cities before killing them by attrition or uh, deliberately starving the, uh, the population to the point that they are dying of famine. We, we didn't cause the famine in Gaza. That was Hamas. They say as they uh, starve another baby to death in a hospital. Are you saying that it is more akin to an ethnic cleansing or it's not a genocide? Saying, I mean, I, I think it's really funny to both claim that Israel doesn't do enough to protect civilians and then to use a word like ethnic cleansing, like a nasty, accusatory, racist word when they actually. Oh, eth saying something's an ethnic cleansing is racist now. OK. Did try uh, like that? ethnic like to suggest okay. they're doing something okay. you know okay. race oh oh to su suggest that they're doing an ethnic cleansing is racist because I would love to hear her explain he says right. when they tried to protect the civilian lives of the people living okay. in northern Dave, I, 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 I want to get Dave. Well, well, no, 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 yeah, okay, because right. you, you dominated last time, okay. so Dave, okay. you're, you're up. Okay, so uh, yeah. look, I, I want to just say that in terms of the, the charge of genocide, I don't use the word genocide. <laughs> I just think that it, the debate devolves into semantics sure. every time you use yeah. it. The international legal definition of genocide is so incredibly vague yeah. that it's like if you try to destroy a nationality or ethnicity in whole or part, so then, like, if you were to, like, murder two people of an ethnicity, is that a... I just don't even care about the debate. I'm saying it's wrong. And if, in terms of, like, the term ethnic cleansing, there is no debate. Every single new historian in Israel concludes that there was ethnic cleansing at the beginning of the, the creation of Israel. Now, you know, I, I know, I'm just making that point. I just want to go back to revisit something here, because I literally just made what I feel is the most important point of all of this, about that I think the entire Israeli defense is destroyed when you add in the component that they intentionally propped up Hamas so that the Palestinians wouldn't get their freedom. And as a response, Mr. Prager invokes... So, and, hold on. Invokes an atrocity that, yeah. that happened once. And like, okay, that was an atrocity. I only because I didn't have more yeah, time Let me just finish. All right. <sighs> only because I didn't have enough time to list all tragedies for all of time. Well, let me just finish. Atrocities. Yes, I know we you could, could invoke spend the rest of the day or evening. Yes, okay, can I just finish? Non Hamas Palestinian atrocities. What happened to Dyer Yassan? You want to have a. Oh. Interesting. It, it's almost like Dennis Prager is arguing that there's something inherently evil about Palestinians. I interesting. Interesting little mask slip moment. It was 1948. So what? Okay. There is so no what? war in the history of the world oh, oh, where see, you this have is, not had So it's a cop out. So no, if, it's not a cop so, out. No, no, I'm no. acknowledging so the area I said was awful. Okay, so by the way, hold on. Let me just it, finish my. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, damn. Uh, you know what? I will hand it to Dennis Prager. I did not expect him to uh, acknowledge Dear Yassin. I, I did not. I did not think that he would. He would do that. And then you so guys can what? continue. So it me, proves what right, exactly. It proves nothing. My so point is, why it did you make nothing. it? Because I'm because he's trying to show you how the point you made was also pointless. Mirroring how your point proves nothing. You're oh, just okay. dodging. You're just so, dodging the point that I was making that. about this current yeah. war. Yes, there have been. There is. It's objectively true. There have been horrific, ungodly atrocities committed by both sides. Not both sides. That's a oh, lie. Come on. That is a lie. Uh, 
Oh, I Israel has never done a single atrocity. It is not. Sa says, says man who just recognized Dir Yasin. Oh, oh, it's oh, a lie. Oh, okay. You, other than Dir Yasin, which was during wartime. Of a other than Dir Yasin, which was during wartime. Ignore the fact that the people who did it tried to ally themselves with the Nazis twice. It was wartime, everybody. Village and it and absolutely terrible. Tell me where there's been Israeli atrocities comparable to Palestinian atrocities. Go ahead. The, literally the current conflict. That like twelve hundred people died not on October seventh, and now like twenty thousand children have been killed in Gaza. Like. Everybody quiet. Name it. Or you libeled. Name I, I libeled? it or you yes. Wait, name it or you libeled what? I Dennis, are you threatening? Are you threatening to sue him? <laughs> what the hell? So why is the you, one I wait, hold on. So the one I said doesn't count why? Because it was during the time. time? No, because yeah, of there's exceptions. Oh, so to make a yeah. to make a Oh no, no, because it was an exception. It's not a rule. That's right, everybody. You heard it here first, folks, from Dennis Prager. You, everyone gets one massacre, okay? You get to do one completely, utterly horrible massacre. But if you never do another one, you know, it's, it's like a gimme. You know, you're not establishing a pattern of behavior. It's just a fluke of, you know, really a crazy random happenstance. generalization israel commits atrocities and palestinian commits atrocities you can't name one other than in 1948 in a village during a war that the, the, the flower massacre man like literally every day in gaza is a libel of israel it's, and you wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. So, listen you can keep saying the word libel that's yes, fine it is a libel to okay, morally if you wanna, equate well, atrocities on both sides that is a libel what do you mean, by, is what do you mean by libel Libel Just means, oh, Israel is as yeah. guilty of atrocity as the Palestinians is a libel of Israel. Okay. I don't know why that's complex. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, hold on. Well, I was asked the yeah, question here. Well, I'm just saying, saying if here. wars right. don't Rather count, quickly. then fine. But okay. if you want to ask for the atrocity, it's happening right now in Gaza. Exactly. So I don't know what point you're talking about. Hey, atrocities. Yes. Oh, yeah. I see. So this is the same as blowing up school buses of children. You I didn't say it's the same. Them. No, yes, you are th They literally bombed, like foreign aid workers who came to make food for refugees what are you what are you talking about they they've killed twenty thousand children man oh they bombed they bombed school buses full of children yeah and israel has killed twenty thousand children in the last six months I didn't. Then you're using the same no, term. No, you said that. I didn't say that. Okay, I'm just, like I'll be very, very quick. Same. My point was that you mentioning an atrocity that happened in the past did not counter the point that I just made, that this destroys Israel's defense for this war. And I just made the point that I could name atrocities too. You're now claiming that I'm equating things that I never said were the same and accusing yes, me of lying. Both... We... Oh, Sarah Scorpion. Twitch ads break the player every time. Thank you for subscribing with Prime. Sorry, Twitch ads are terrible. I, I, I would disable them if I could, and I, I can't do anything about that. Um, let's keep going. Which is tired. They so respectfully, it's a me. tired they accusation. They commit atrocities is tired. Okay? That's okay. what's No, that's tired. a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Cenk. Yeah, well, he lives in a different planet. Okay, so first True. the genocide thing. Let me just finish that real quick, yes. and then yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Okay, all right. So first of all, just finishing up the genocide real quick. Every genocide uh, defender who says the same thing, and I don't, I don't mean it in a personal way, guys. I just mean that the Serbs, literally at the International Criminal Court, said, "Well, we didn't target them because they're Muslims. We targeted them because they were there and they were against us." The Turks said, "We didn't target them because they're Armenians. It's because they struck us first and they did this rebellion and they were killing Turkish civilians. What the hell were we supposed to do? We had to move them and we had to kill them. So we had a right to defend ourselves." You're mirroring exactly what every defender of a genocide says. Well, and what I say back to the Turks 
works, my own people, is, yeah, you didn't kill Norwegians, you didn't kill uh, people from Botswana, you killed Armenians, and you targeted Armenians. And in the same exact way, Israel is targeting Palestinians. The fact that it's because they're there doesn't help that case at all. And you're moving them, you're killing them. True. True. Jenk is 100% right here. Like, it's nice to see him, like, not be a dumbass, frankly. Uh, and you're targeting Germans, Palestinians. Yeah, that is a genocide. Yeah, America target Germans. Okay, so hold on. I haven't even. That's yeah. just a quick right. point on genocide. I didn't even get to the actual right, thing you're, because you're, he's making it. He's making a point debate about. Mate doesn't agree with the right, word well, genocide. Well, okay, it's I a don't difference care. between. Oh, okay, okay. Right. So I don't care at all. That's okay. So there's a lot we don't agree on. He's a libertarian now, progressive. So yeah, we disagree on everything. Well, yes, true. He shouldn't be on a zero hedge debate. But you know what? I do, I do like Dennis Prager getting dragged for and two now hours. I'm having a lot of fun. Matter. Malachi, thank you for gifting eyes rolling a sub. That is very kind of you. And um, I, I, you know, really, you're elevating, you're elevating Riverboat.gg's prestige. I was just about to start talking about how Twitch chat is showing you guys up. Just, this is so terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're in agreement. Oh, yeah. yeah. So now the core yeah. of the thing is. Like this, the reason I said Dennis lives on a different planet is, he says, name one Israeli atrocity. Everyone out there that isn't an Israeli supporter is screaming into the camera, right now, mm -hmm. right now. So for example, Hamas killed 34 kids on October 7th. I, I came out immediately, condemned it in the strongest words. I can't believe it. Well, how is that helpful? It's immoral, it's counterproductive, it's dumb, it's uh, terrible in every way. 34 uh, poor Israeli kids. There are now 15,000 dead Palestinian kids. And you're telling right. me that Israel hasn't so, com committed right. atrocities? We're, we're, we're so okay. guys, what, what we are seeing with our yeah. own eyes is that Gaza is decimated. They destroyed the entire place and 85% of... And, eight, and 80... For me. It's okay. okay, sorry. Right, <laughs> and, and over... Also, just, just as an FYI, I, I just looked this up. Uh, a charity organization called SaveTheChildren.org UK um, estimates that actually the death toll for children in uh, the Gaza Strip right now is twenty six thousand. So, just uh, just letting you guys know, like, it's a lot. <laughs> 85% of Palestinians have been displaced. There's 1.1 million people starving to death, and you still can't see it. And that's what's amazing about bias, that you look at how they have killed over 33,000. Oh, those, yeah, true, very knifey duck. I, I neglected to uh, remember that they were members of Hamas. I forgot. Thousand people, okay, say 6,000 is a must, say 9,000 is a must. You still have 25,000 dead women and children, and you go, what atrocities? They have kill zones. Why did they kill the three Israeli hostages? Because they were in a kill zone. In a kill zone, they murder everyone in the kill zone. There's sniper bullets in kids' heads because they were in a kill zone. They've killed more. Uh, journalists than all other conflicts this year combined. They've killed three times the amount of humanitarian aid workers. The World Central Kitchen, they murdered those people. There was a six-year-old who was stuck. They told the IDF, we are going to get her. The IDF said, okay. The IDF goes and finds her. They'd already killed her. The rest of her family members in that car. They then killed not only the six-year-old girl, but everyone in the ambulance that came to rescue them. And you're saying you can't see a it's single so Israeli atrocity? Yeah. And one last thing. What they have kept these people. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And the, and the and last atrocity okay. is keeping five and a half million Palestinians prisoners. And, and, and Prager says, oh, not 75 years, only 57 years we've kept these people prisoners. And think about the absurd claims that you guys are making. Oh, the Palestinians are fine inside of Israel. I can make the same exact claim for black people during slavery. Well, they were fine in the North. We had a democracy yeah. in America. Uh, what Iraqis, are you guys complaining about slavery the, in the South? Okay. We, they were treated perfectly fine say, in uh, the uh, North. Last point there. We actually have to do a quick read from our sponsor. So, Dave, if do you... Oh, my, oh, my God. Oh, my God. What?
Don't we mind. do we uh, have well, to do, do a quick read? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Hey That's guys, right. you know what I love? Debates about Israel and Palestine. <laughs> but you know what I hate? Woke corporations. People are waking up and realizing that their daily spending habits are shaping this country and empowering radically destructive ideologies. It's time to change that. Welcome to a new marketplace, a place where you can buy everything your family is. Is he doing a bit? Because this is going on too long if it's a bit. It, uh, needs uh, that tra respects traditional American values. Whether it's a big box realtor's agenda across the line, or you're trying to support more more small businesses. Is, is, is he doing a bit, or is this an ad read? Public Square, that's where you gotta go. They are ready to help you find... No, okay, no, this is the actual ad read. This is the actual ad read. That was really, really off-putting. The power of commerce easier than ever to vote. Loving Americans like you, sh an exclusive discount. No, no, like, no, no, Just so you know, it, if right. anyone sitting next to me fully supports this message. Yeah, okay, all right. Okay, so here's what, so I'm being He's told us in terms of, uh, we're going to move on to the Iran section in a little bit, but Dennis, I did promise that you were going to be able to respond on the genocide question, so I want to give you that chance before we move on to that section. Go ahead. Well, I, I, I keep referring to two things, but repetition is the mother of pedagogy, as I learned in the course of my life. Good life. Good line. It, it, yes, thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> because I know how important it is. I don't learn the first time. The United States can be accused, or Britain could be accused, of committing genocide in Germany. The United States could be accused of committing genocide in Japan by the exact same criteria as, quote-unquote, Israel is committing genocide in Gaza. When did it stop? When did the American bombing of Japan or of Germany stop? When they surrendered. If Hamas surrendered tomorrow, gave up the hostages that are still alive, I'm sure they killed quite a number. Uh, but nevertheless, if they, if they did that, if they surrendered and that would end the issue, it would end the issue the next day. Israel doesn't want to bomb Palestinians. The reason that there are so many Palestinian civilians being killed, whatever the number it is, and that is a tragedy, it is not an atrocity. There's a difference between tragedy and atrocity. Atrocity is deliberate, tragedy is not deliberate. Israel does not deliberately target civilians. Hamas deliberately puts civilians in the way of targeting them. That is, that is the way in which they have created it. One other thing, you will probably know this because it was in Newsweek. A, a, a member of the United States military who teaches at West Point said that Israel has been the most moral army in urban warfare that he has ever, uh, has ever, you, okay, you laugh at him, he that's correct. I, I that's right, you're allowed to laugh at him. He did write it, and so, and, it and so did thing. the head, the head, uh, yeah. Kemp, Richard Kemp, the head of all British forces in Afghanistan, said that Israel, the IDF, is the most moral army he has ever encountered, which, given that he is a member of the British army and is, is a high Hot take, everyone, but maybe a member of the British military is not to be trusted on what militaries are moral. They're the British military, one of the most evil militaries on the face of the earth that literally stretched an empire across the planet under threat of force. Like... The, the colonies weren't good, Dennis. We live in America. Our founding was literally having to fight the British. This is this this is where this is where you're gonna be like, oh, but but those guys who were oppressing us, they they know oppressive militaries. <laughs> okay. I ranking, I think, a general. That is particularly uh, a powerful phrase. That's the truth. They do everything they can not to kill civilians, and it would stop tomorrow if Hamas... Man, if that's really true, then they're really bad at that. Surrender. Okay. I know this is going to be infuriating for you guys, but uh, we do have a clip uh, that we want to play. This is going to be on Iran. Feel free. We can come back to this in a little bit, but I do think it is important. So this is a clip which has been curated for us uh, by Zero Hedge. This is Benjamin Netanyahu on the topic of overthrowing Iran, uh, something he's advocated for since the 1990s. And specifically, we want to focus in after the clip about why the U.S. should support Israel and its endeavors and its uh, defense against Iran if it chooses to do so. Let's take a listen to the clip now, please, and let's see it. 
Uh, obviously, we'd like to see a regime change, at least I would, in Iran, just as I would like to see in Iraq. The question now is a practical question. What is the best place to proceed? It's not a question of whether Iraq's regime should be taken out, but when should it be taken out? It's not a question of whether you'd like to see a regime change in Iran, but how to achieve it. The application of power. And so that clip, I wanted to turn to you guys. Dennis, uh, actually, what year was that? You I'm sorry. What I year 2002. Entail? That was December 2002, prior to the U.S. invasion of Iraq. Right. Dennis, you just spoke, so Bacha, I think we can go to you. This is specifically on the Iranian question. And I think about U.S. support. We are in America, Iranian after all. Question, as to Jesus. why should the United States, should it defend Israel in the Iranian retaliation for the Israeli bombing of what the Iranians Casper hell Cosmic yeah. Lord, hell yeah! And thank you for subscribing. And thank you for overtaking uh, Riverboat.gg. Uh, you're really putting you're really putting uh, RGG into their place. Okay, uh, good job. Keep it up. Humble them. Claim was an embassy of what the Israelis claim is a uh, IRGC military outpost. So why don't you go ahead and then I'll get some uh, response from Dave. I think the question is a little bit backwards. I okay. don't think Iran would have retaliated from Iranian soil rather than from um, a proxy, as is its want, had it not picked up on signals from the Biden administration that it was weakening, it, weakening in its resolve mm. and its support of Israel. So that is the question here is, I think the order is reversed. Okay. Yeah, and I think that that is, it is historic that Iran attacked Israel from Iranian soil. And so it is extremely significant that, you know, according to, you know, my analysis, many others, that was the direct result of um, Biden's wavering support, which can be attributed to, mm. you know, 100,000 voters in Dearborn, Dearborn, you know, domestic politics, let's say, right? Okay. The, the youth vote, what, what have you, right? His need to signal, I'm not behind Israel in the way that you think to the people who he thinks need to hear that in the United States. Um, as for what, whether we should support Israel in its retaliation against Iran, um, you know, I, I'm, I consider myself an America first person. I think probably we would agree mm. when it comes to Ukraine and, and Russia. Um, I do think this is significantly different America because, you know, person, the Iranians huh? and the Houthis, they're not only chanting, you know, death to Israel, they are chanting death to America. They do see us as linked from a values point of view with Israel. Most Americans agree with them. And so it seems to me to be um, sort of odd to say, well, we're, you know, the Americans who think that are wrong, the Iranians who think that are wrong, we also get a lot of extremely material benefits from our allyship with Israel um, in terms of military intelligence, which has saved countless... Calibrating? Thank you for the gifted membership over on YouTube, spreading those hearts around. Hell yeah. lives, both American and Israeli and European, uh. in terms of um, our military industrial complex. Maybe you don't think we should be, you know, have an industry that makes trillions of dollars to the United States GDP that's based in weapons, but we do. And Israel has made us a lot of money in that regard and actually sacrificed developing its own military industrial complex. Israel's made us a lot of money, so we should allow genocidal practices? What? that would have competed with ours. So arguably, yeah. I actually think this is true, Israel loses more this by lady getting American is disgusting. aid than it gains. Great, although, then we'll stop. Although I think America probably gets a lot out of that, but ultimately that is a question for voters to decide. Okay. I would not be at all, you know, that is a question for voters to decide. I do think we are linked in the mind of Iran and in all of the minds of their proxies, and that's why we should be supporting okay. Israel. Dave, go ahead. Oh, well, yeah, I completely agree that Israel is great for the military-industrial <laughs> complex. So, I mean, if that's your pitch for why uh, we ought to support them. Look, I, I, I would highly encourage people to, to educate themselves about this if they haven't already. I, I'd encourage people to read a piece called A Clean Break, A New Strategy for Securing the Realm. I'm sure you're familiar with it, sir. It was written by Richard Pearl and David Wormser in 1996. And this was a letter from two people who both served in the George W. Bush administration, very influential neoconservatives. And they did not write this letter to uh, Bill Clinton, who was the president at the time. They didn't write it to Bob Dole, who was the Republican nominee running for president at the time. This was written to Benjamin Netanyahu. And it was all about how regime change in Iraq 
will be in Israel's interest because then you can break up this peace process that that Yitzhak Rabin started down and we won't have to do this anymore. You'll have security in the region. You know, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu coming in 2002 testifying before Congress as a regional expert explaining how if you overthrow Saddam Hussein, there's going to be peace in the region. It will have this sweeping effect where it makes everything better. Aside from the fact that they all got it all wrong, and not just wrong, but like disastrously wrong, the biggest... But the thing is here, the, the miscalculation he's making in his argument here is that Netanyahu didn't get it wrong. Like, Netanyahu wants this chaos and wants these messes because he personally benefits from them. Like... It's allowed him to consolidate so much power in Israel that he's basically legally untouchable currently. And uh, he's, it's, it's made him, it, it's basically put him into a position where he can reach out a hand and if he's lucky, be the dictator of Israel. Like that's, that's been like his long game. It's not a mistake. He didn't whoopsie daisy his way here. Like, this has been intentional. This is the end game. This catastrophic disaster in modern American history level wrong. I just do not understand how you can square the circle of Hello, claiming trans to be America Jade. How first you doing? and also claiming we must unconditionally support a country who is clearly trying to pressure us into anti-America first policies. Look, this is just a fact, okay? Every president of my lifetime, uh, Trump might be an exception to this, I'm not sure, is it? but everyone else wanted a two-state solution, including, believe it or not, George W. Bush. After 9-11, Colin Powell, who was the wisest member of the George W. Bush administration, I don't think anyone would argue against that, he still sold the war in Iraq, even though he didn't believe in it, so he'll, he'll have to talk to his maker about that. But he told George W. Bush right after 9-11, you got to do a two-state solution, and you got to do it now, for two reasons. Number one, you got record high approval ratings, this is the time to get it done. But more importantly, because he knew this is what drives so much of the terrorism problem that we have. It's not that Iran sees us as the same as Israel. It's that they recognize that we've been propping them up. We're the ones who shoots down the resolutions at the UN. We're the ones who, who funds them and arms them. Okay, yep. and what happened? George W. Bush couldn't get it done. It was Tom DeLay. John Mearsheimer has done great reporting on this. It was Tom DeLay in the House who told them, you'll be a one-term president if you even try to do this, okay? Every American president has wanted a two-state solution. Again, maybe not Donald Trump. But the rest of them all did, and they couldn't get it done. All I'm saying is if you're America first, how can you support the fact that we have a political system where our elected representatives get rebuked by a foreign country? Wait, that wait, is wait. not America wait, wait. first. You, you, the reason he would have been a one-term president is because the American people would have rebelled, right? Not because Bibi Netanyahu Partially. would have come here oh, and oh, made right, sure right, right. that No, I'm can't... sorry, you're going to ask that. No, it's also because there's a giant, powerful lobby advocating on behalf of a foreign government who makes it their mission to ruin the lives of anybody who's critical of that foreign government. That's a part of it, too. By the way, the evangelical Christians, that's also a big part right. of it. Right. So, right. so, yes. The idea, well, can I just, yeah, yeah. I just well, need we'll to respond We've got to get Dennis in here. Okay. I'll, I'll, right. I'll yield. All right. Uh, right. Then I'll speak. I'll okay. yield and then speak. Okay. <laughs> well, it just, but like the idea that some lobby is the reason that an idea has power in the United States is completely backwards. What? What? You think someone could just buy a lot of messaging in the United States? That's ridiculous. What? Oh, what? Next, you're going to be telling me that advertising works? What? Who let her in? Who who let her in and did hair and makeup when she's clearly like tinfoil hat crazy? Who did that? Why? Oh god. The lobby gets its power because it is representing where, like, the majority of Americans are at. A lobby on its own. You really? think the NRA? You don't think it's shaping you it?
uh, oh, oh, lobbyists represent where the majority of Americans are. Oh, okay, yeah, you're excellent, excellent stance here. I think that the NRA is the reason that people have guns in America? Really, you no, don't the think NRA that? Are... The... They lobbied so they lobbied successfully for for handguns. What are you talking about? A bunch of sellouts. <laughs> No, 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 wait, Sorry, no, no, but the idea, no, no, like, it's, it's a very good parallel. Americans have overwhelmingly supported Israel. If there was no APAC, they still would have supported Israel. So that, why that, do we need an APAC? Oh, because why every... Why do we need an NRA? Well, yeah, exactly. We don't. Wow. Again, like, what do, what do these... What, when they're trying to spout this rhetoric, what, what do they think lobbyists do? You know, like, do they think, like, oh, the lobbyists just go and spend hundreds of millions of dollars for no reason? Are, are all of these companies that lobby the government, like, just sp spending untold amounts of money every year for no reason? Hmm, really makes you tink. All right, fine. So you. Well, I don't think right. we need APAC either. Yeah. Israel would be okay. just fine without it because Great. the American Another people deal. have okay. its back. Okay. 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 Whether yeah. we need it or not is what? not the question. The okay. question is why do they exist, given the fact, which is fair, why do they exist? Because people lobby politicians on behalf of what many Americans support. Americans to this day and every poll still support Israel, as it happens. So uh, the arguments that, that have been offered here. Uh, it, it, again, it, it, it really is a, a different planet. Uh, just for the record, this may come as a shock to the two of you at least, uh, many, perhaps many listening, and I, I would put my hand on a Bible, I would take a lie detector test, because obviously there's, there's no way I could prove this. When I watched, I remember sitting at the edge of my bed watching this, and I never watched TV, I watched uh, Arafat and Rabin shake hands, and I had tears in my eyes. That is how badly I wanted peace. I supported a two-state solution nearly all of my life, certainly since the Six-Day War when I was a college kid. I have always supported it. I no longer support it, just like nearly every peace activist in Israel. Okay, then what, what does he think should happen? Israel no longer supports it, and we don't support it thanks to Hamas and thanks to the PLO. Like, like he's, he's, talk, he's talking about this like it's, it's like sending your teen, a teenager to their room for being rude or something and like oh yeah we're, we're gonna take away your video games we're gonna take away your state like uh, okay and what are you proposing that looks like dennis it like is dennis gonna come out and be like i think we should directly annex got the occupied territories and give all palestinians equal human rights and voting rights even though that would drastically change the political dynamics within Israel. Hey Paladin, how you doing? We're doing we're doing good. Also my dude, welcome raiders. We're we're going through some brain rot. We're we're knee deep in it. All right, we're in the trenches. However, we're at the top of the hour ad break. Everybody, if you've been finding this show interesting, if you've been enjoying or uh, finding catharsis in this coverage, then please hit the follow button on Twitch, hit the subscribe button on YouTube, like the YouTube stream, and. And this part is very important because my ability to survive depends on it. Consider dropping some subs or donos, folks. The more subs and donos we get, the more emotes we can have. Uh, the more memberships we get on YouTube, the more emotes we can have. You know? And once you hit an arbitrary number, something might happen. Long day, but I had a good night. Hell yeah. I'm I'm glad you had a good night. I know I know life's been a bit rough lately, so I, I hope I hope you're doing okay. What is the question mark question mark question mark subs thing? Um it it is an unknown. 
you know, when you hit an unknown number of subs, something unknown will happen. Um, my penis grew 10 inches after I subscribed. Oh my God. The testimonials are amazing. Subscribe to Riverboat Jack today for 10 whole hog inches. That's that's the riverboat guarantee. Um <laughs> God. How how are so many of you watching this tonight? I don't understand. We we literally have we literally have like almost 250 people watching right now. That's ridiculous. Remember to tune in tomorrow for the 420 day special because that's going to be a good time, I think. I hate myself. Turn that frown upside down, amigo. I came from DD. You did come from Dead Domain, and I appreciate you and them. Because you're cute and funny and kind. Thanks. It could be anything. It could even be a boat. Exactly, Paladin. It's a wild world. It could be literally anything. Just caught up because I'm in Germany. I wanted to make a joke about something there, but I, I, I came up with nothing. I'm sorry. You deserve all the eyes. Well, one day we'll be bigger than Hassan, baby. Bigger than Hassan. What's this about a boat? I love boats. We're in the river boat. That's why you're here. You've been drawn by the call of the boat. All right. Let us continue on our brain rot journey. We are only halfway through it, believe it or not because they have made it clear if Israel leaves the West Bank, they will get another genocidal, if you want to use the term, a genocidal terror group of Nazi-like Hamas people I... running it. Why have there not sure. been elections? Why is the PLO not allowed elections for, what is it now, uh, 16 yeah. years? Because they're afraid Hamas will win. Agreed. I, I agree. I just, I just want to yeah. like, because I appreciate you saying that. And yeah, what a tragedy that that peace deal didn't work out. You know, and I, I totally take you at your word at that. I was just wondering if either of you guys would respond to the point that I made before that you just kind of brought up the Olympic like atrocity after I've been that. Just to since hold you on, made but it. I just say, don't, <laughs> so if you, if Hamas is so horrible, and I know you guys would both say like Iran finances Hamas, and so they're evil for that. What about the government of Israel doing I, it? Like, do we I have anything to, to say yeah, about that? Right. Yeah. So when you, you are, yes, yeah, I'll tell yeah. you, I'll say, I'll give you an answer. The United States supported the second greatest mass murderer in history after Mao, Stalin, in order to defeat Hitler. It is very common to support scum to, to defeat bigger scum. So who's the okay. bigger scum than Hamas? Wait, 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 the, the bigger five, scum was those who wanted to destroy Israel. Okay. But isn't that Hamas? Uh, uh, you're right, so it's both. So, so, so that, that, no, 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 so that, you, that, that invalidates your argument. No, it doesn't matter. Oh my god. Is what? the random happening number 25 or less? BWA. Is... Paladin, thank you for the $40 dono. Thank you so much. Is the random number happening random number happening 25 or less? Uh no. Carlton Milk. Hello. Let's see here. That is Eight? Yes. Eight. Maybe people would vote for Hamas because they don't want to be fucking slaughtered and support people fighting against it. I don't know, though. Yeah, I mean, like, that that's the thing. I don't under- Like, I feel like people can understand. <laughs> like, if you're- If you're getting, like, Annihilated, you, you'll you'll latch on to anything. Oh, anyway, just okay. okay, no, please. you just. Oh. Dennis Prager seems oddly salty about the whole Nazis being killed thing, huh? B W A I guess. <laughs> Very knifey duck. Thank you for the five dollar dono. I appreciate it. Thank you very very much. 
Please, just have please. no argument. Who's okay. the bigger no, no, scum? No, no, Who's please. worse no, no, than no. worse than the Nazis? Please. You're right. No, no, yeah. other Nazis. Okay. You're right. Okay. They're equivalent. Okay. I don't right. know. Why is that? Why is that a thing? Gotcha. Gotcha. Ah, yes. Hamas. Known, known members of the National Socialist Party. Oh, God. The worst part about Dennis Prager, the absolute worst part about him, and I don't know if you, can, you can't see it right now with this. I'm just going to move it. If you zoom in really close, he's smiling like he just did a good gotcha. Like, he, he, he has this, like, little smug, he, like, hee-haw smile he does, and it's just like, hmm, that's right. I just owned you in the marketplace of ideas. And, like, he does it in a way almost as if he's aware that he just said, like, something that's not actually that intelligent. It's almost like it's self-aware, but not quite. It's, it's a very, like, w subtle expression on his part. Uh, Jane, just Jane, not an Jane, answer, Jane, I'm Bacha sorry. needs to re respond, she's been trying to respond, and then we're <laughs> sure. we have to bring it back to the Iran question too. Sure, sure. I have two, main, two yeah. main responses to that. I think it's a really important point. I don't disagree that it was a disastrous, in hindsight, disastrous at the time. Also, chat, everyone needs to thank Paladin Lost for restoring Riverboat.gg's honor, okay? You guys were barely holding on there on, uh, against Twitch. I thought it was disastrous because, as you say, it's not just – it wasn't that he, Netanyahu was giving Israeli taxpayer funds to Hamas, right. but he was facilitating the transfer of cash from Qatar. Okay? So let's just be very – like Sent the head of Mossad to Qatar to make sure the cash yes. came back in specifically yes. for the reasons of keeping Hamas but it's in not power that he was, okay. so he didn't yes. have to give them a But it's not that he is giving so them the money, right? Look, I caught a white name. BWA <laughs> for the blind gal win. Amber Brains, is that – is that your first, is that your first white name? Look at you. You've come so far. And thank you for the gift, gifting a, a tier one sub to Carlton Milk. I hope uh, they appreciate it. That's very generous of you. Thank you. 27. Micah. Secret number is 420. When it's reached. Jack will take 20 tokes from a four-foot bong. <laughs> I would be so gone. Oh, my God. Micah, thank you for the, uh, the tier one sub. I appreciate it. You've come so far. That's what she said <laughs> at the Come Olympics. Only the finest comedy here. Heading to bed. Happy 420, Terra Nova. Get good sleep, okay? And have a good day tomorrow. <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. I'm real sorry. All right, moving on. Move, moving on. You mean the shot put? Yes, that's what some call it. <laughs> it's the bareback shot put. It's yeah. not coming from Israel. I just want, just want to be clear. Sure. Um, you know, there are a couple of things I just want to, I, I want to point out about that. The first is he didn't do that because he thought Hamas was capable of October 7th. He did that because he thought they, they had no power. That I, they, I said I pre-gamed the little gamer, G. It had no real ability. He thought he could control to, the height of the flame where his work. Just hold on, Dave, please. Yes. Yes. I he he, he, we'll thought, yes. he yes. thought that they were less of a threat to Israelis than the potential of a Palestinian state led by Abu Mazen. And as a result, he humiliated. Holy shit. A new, we have a new testimonial from riverboat.gg user Micah. Quote, I donated and now I have a 420 20 inch hog. <laughs> That's that is a long hog. My God, it's it's longer than my apartment. Jesus Christ, the mental image is horrific. Oh God. We're all going to hell for laughing about that right now. And by all of us, I mean me. <laughs> Moving on.
affiliated routinely Abu Mazen, who was represented the, the nonviolent <laughs> camp. Blessing that or it was a curse. A, were criminal at the time, and in hindsight, even more so. But to say that he was propping up the people who then would do October 7th, <laughs> I don't think that is fair. Not because I, I don't. I didn't say that. Where does no one it, Because so he was doing it out of a complete misunderstanding about what they were capable of. And the second point that I would make about that is you left out something very important in your narrative of how things went from like the beautiful Israel that like was coalescing around Robin to the like horrible Israel in which Bibi Netanyahu was able to cobble together very with much difficulty, by the way, the ruling coalition that he has now that I'm sure we would all agree is not the one we would like to see in power. Um, not that we're stakeholders or voters there, but um, you left out the second intifada, which is extremely important. Um, uh, you know, a thousand Israelis, 700 of them civilians, murdered, going to school on the bus, children murdered, blown to pieces. You know, that was the equivalent. I think, you know, I think maybe they were testing at an AI this day. They, they like put an AI into like a, into like a robot you know, like that, that one robot that could talk. And then they like, they, 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 this was the result. This is just a large language model malfunctioning, okay? Of 50,000 Americans dying over the course yeah. of four years. That changes a nation. Twitch chat still talking about 420 inch dicks. Uh, all, your, all your minds are in the gutter with those very long dicks. That is the reason that the Likud vision was able to get to a place where not a ruling majority, but was that, able to okay. come. Why don't you think right, that second Antifada happened you're, during the okay. Oslo Accords? We're, we're and getting it past. It's the Microsoft chip. I just think that this of the disrupts your clean okay. narrative yeah. of Bibi yeah. Netanyahu yeah. being the person who propelled, you know, who, who enabled October 7th to happen okay. as I some think, sort of... I think points been made, so Cenk, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, I haven't spoken since we started the Iran part, so I have about 12 things to respond to. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, so I like that Dennis acknowledged that uh, Netanyahu and Israel did prop up Hamas. Uh, so there you go. Uh, now we the know. Truth. Yeah. But, but she gave the answer. He did not know what monsters he was supporting. Oh, he didn't I, know who Hamas was? It. Come on, come on. Okay, and it's because he doesn't want, because he wants a permanent occupation. And I'm glad that Dennis just acknowledged he also wants a permanent occupation. No, I don't. No, I'm not for two states now. I so pray for two states then. eventually. Eventually, okay. yes. So, uh, but not now. More years, not now. It will be five more years. It will be hundred more years. No. How long should they be your servants? As soon as Hamas, uh, uh, your uh, prisoners. As soon, as soon, as soon, how long would you like to keep uh, the they're prisoners? They're not prisoners. Okay. As soon as Hamas, they're literally prisoners. Uh, uh, as soon as Hamas right? gives up, no, surrender. No, because that's his position. He just said he doesn't when, want. Right. When were we prepared to make peace with Germany when the Nazis came out of power? If the Nazi-like Palestinians are out of power, I would have peace the next uh, day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's all right. So he says, okay, and in depth definite occupation where we will keep the Palestinians under our thumb and our boot and, and until they know their role then maybe we'll consider freeing them but until then they will have to serve us okay very uh, Christian of you or whatever uh, it is that people say these days okay so um, speaking of Christians there's a giant Christian Zionist movement here and they uh, are also part of the reason why they polling uh, turned out okay for Israel throughout a lot of our history. But by the way, they are now greatly dwindled, and that is why the polling for Israel in America is not as good anymore. And by the way, the fact that Israel has made, and Netanyahu has made a deal with the devil, with those Christian Zionists, is abhorrent, because if you push them on what they plan to do, they said, oh yeah, we love Israel, because then Jesus is gonna come back after they Israel. They never say that. I they know they, them, they I, definitely I, say they it, they've said it a thousand that. times. Okay. And then he's I'm, gonna I'm murder not, all I'm the a, Jews. I'm, I'm a Jew, Congratulations I'm you, with devil. He doesn't know what Deal he's with the about. devil.
Sinai to Zion study. We're now in session 21. In the last uh, handful of previous sessions, we looked at multiple passages in Moses, in the Pentateuch, as well as throughout the prophets that repeatedly reiterate the fact that Israel's national salvation, the remnant of Israel, when they all come to the Lord, that that grand event is integrally intertwined with Israel's restoration, their permanent restoration to the land. By the way, uh, them becoming one with the Lord is them being, you know, wiped off the face of the earth to, you know, go join God. And so the scriptures clearly speak in the last days of a national revival among the Jews that are left at the end of Jacob's trouble and their permanent restoration to the land under the headship of Jesus the Messiah. Now, whenever we talk about this, it's very natural for people who are pro-Israel, of which I am, um, who live in the land of Israel, to say, well, hold on. What about the recent reestablishment of the state of Israel in 1948, the current state of Israel? Are there any scriptures that prophesy concerning Israel's restoration? And the answer is yes, there are. Um, but before we discuss those, I want to... He's talking about how Israel is a fulfillment of biblical scripture and is necessary to bring about the end times. That, Like, the thing Dennis Prager is saying doesn't exist. He's, he's doing it right here. Or here's another example. Loud. Is this an ad? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, the end time survival guide. Cool stuff. I've been preaching for 30 years, and uh, I've never had a week uh, of preparation quite like this one. My wife drove me here because I'm a bit disoriented, and uh, God's been revealing things to me in a deep and profound way um, all week, uh, a constant flow of new revelation, things I've never um, put together or considered or really read anywhere, uh, including just moments ago. I got another. Could this be a new idea? No, it must be God. A scripture from Joel that I'll share with you in the sermon, and there'll probably be a lot of... Um, there, prophetic revelation no, the during not. the course of the sermon um oh man that that's so cool you can make some you dog you can make something up and call it a prophetic revelation that's crazy the sabbath day saturday be back to the days of house descendants of ishmael we witnessed a week ago today was hamas invading and attacking israel Hamas are Palestinians, descendants oh, of... This is Mark Driscoll. He's a very uh, crazy evangelical uh, Christian preacher. Ishmael. Israel are Jews, descendants of Isaac. This battle has been occurring for 4,000 years, roughly, back to the days of Abraham. And the attack was land, sea, and air. It occurred on a Saturday morning, which in Israel is the Sabbath day. People are sleeping. Their technology is off. As a result, they are more vulnerable. In addition, they were finishing a week-long Jewish holiday, and it was a time off of work, and it was one of the most joyous weeks on the Hebrew calendar. This would be like Thanksgiving or Christmas for those of us who are in the States. You're traveling to see family, your technology is off, you're resting and enjoying. And then there was a terrorist attack. Grown men, the civilian of that Arabic phrase is, our God is greater. People that elves to be men and is a declaration that the demon and demons working through these people 
consider themselves to be greater than Jesus Christ, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Ephesians 6 says that our war is not just against flesh and blood, but powers, principalities, and spirits. There is God is great Christ for our trust. Do the math. This would be the equivalent of 40,000 people dying on 9-11, not 2,000. This, this is happening. Number one, um, they know that people, civilians, will be more vulnerable during a holiday season. And that's what we are seeing is airstrikes into... Okay, uh, can you not poorly describe the situation? ...is the counterfeit of being filled with the Spirit. Hamas is a spirit. <laughs> anyway, uh, th this is the level of uh, understanding of geopolitics that Dennis Prager is saying doesn't exist. Anyway... Okay. okay. So, right. okay. Uh, all right. Uh, Guys, have, come on now. All right. Fine. Okay. Also, that is one of the most popular evangelical preachers in America, just, just as an FYI. So, uh, and APAC, and look, Batya, you just said that Israel is helping, helping us because they helped the military industrial complex, and they, were, they have lobbyists just like everybody else, these lovely lobbyists. Okay. I don't think you realize how unpopular those comments are. So, yes, APAC is definitely lobbyists. Along with the Christian Zionists, they definitely influence politicians. The reason Tom DeLay said you'll be a one-term congressman is because he said the Christian Zionists will turn on you and the evangelical base will turn on you. In ter and APAC will turn on you. APAC's no, about to spend a... Right the first okay. Okay. No, so they're both. 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 Yeah. both. Yeah. both. Okay, so right hold on. Guys, guys. guys. Go, continue. Okay. Continue, so if, if you guys are saying that the $100 million that APAC is promised to spend in the next election is not relevant to the politicians, that these politicians are angels. They would never consider millions of dollars given to them in bribes, I mean campaign contributions. And that actually determines almost 95% of elections, the, the, not the APAC money, but lobbyist money overall. That they don't take that into account because they're because Joe Biden's an angel. He took 11.2 million dollars from APAC, but that didn't affect him at all. He's the number one donor uh, of uh, that got money from APAC in United States Senate history. Who's the number? One? Is there even a single major real leftist PAC? Not that I can think of off the top of my head. I know I've heard of like maybe one or two, but like. I guess not major. No, I, I wouldn't consider any of them major. One donor for uh, Speaker Johnson, APAC. But you guys say no, Ted Cruz, APAC. No, 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 those beautiful angels would never be affected by the bribes, I mean campaign contributions that APAC is giving them. And by the way, it is not just APAC. Guys, Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, they love this war. Are you kidding me? A giant war in the Middle East, they're gonna make so much money. You're talking about the oil companies, the oil companies go make billions, maybe trillions from this. All of those different lobbies are bribing True. both the Republicans and the Democrats. So there is massive money that is going into this potential war. Now this war, we've seen this movie before, it was the Iraq war. And yes, morons, warmongers like Netanyahu said, oh, we're gonna be greeted as liberators. How'd that turn out for us? Iran is four times the size of Iraq. I am not going into Iran. I will do a massive re rebellion inside America and I bet I get a ton of right-wingers and a ton of left-wingers and no one, there's not a single American troop that's gonna go into the Middle East to die for Netanyahu, not one. That's, if you just try to send one of our did, guys into the Middle East. Did Jenk just say he's going to start a rebellion in the United States against the U.S.? Uh, okay. What? What performative nonsense is this? That's We're going to stop paying taxes. It'll be a massive tax rebellion. You know what I I'm not going to give money. Oh. oh. Okay. Wait. A, a tax rebellion. Okay. That's, that's a bit different, I guess. Just stop right now, yeah, man. Dave, Let's not even wait Dave for this war. Good luck, good luck going to war with the IRS, I guess. Dennis, I think uh, with, to return to the Iran question, you can respond to them that as well. But make the case for why the U.S. military should defend Israel against There, Israel. There's the jank I know from the recent gas leak. God.
Iran as well. I did not, in some of your comments. You didn't say the U.S. military. Well, well, you said Israel, whether okay, America right. should support. Right, I did right, not fair suggest. Yeah, right. yes, fair enough. Israel okay, has, I said the U.S. supports. Israel You're right. Israel has made it clear Good all point. of its existence. It doesn't want one American soldier yes. to die in Israel or to fight in Israel. Okay, I just want to make that Just clear. the money in the jets. That's okay. right. That right. is correct. No, just the money yeah. in the jets. That is right. Okay. So if you feel that supporting Israel is immoral, fine. That's the clarity that I, I aim for. Oh, it's definitely immoral. So, yeah, it's definitely They're immoral. They're imprisoning right. 5 million That's Palestinians. Right. That's right. I right. see. Okay. They're oppressors. Right. Okay. Right. 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 Go ahead. They're, they're yeah. not imprisoned. They are occupied. They are not imprisoned. Okay? Uh, you, you can come. Can, hey, hey, Dennis, can they leave? Can, can, can they leave, though? Like... Hey, 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 Dennis, if they want to leave, ca can they? Oh, oh, no, they can't? Oh, then they are actually a prison then. The, the, the water, the, 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 what is that? You you the the you rape of the word. We couldn't even do that to prisoners in America. He let you talk. Not barely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. <laughs> right, the... the the left has a mangled language. I say raped, and people get angry. Well, aren't you raping the word rape? No, we look up rape in the dictionary. There are two definitions, like the rape of the rainforest is not a sexual act. They have raped the word genocide. They have raped the word racism. They have raped all of these. You could just use a different word, man. Instead of having, like, your word choice was so bizarre and off-putting, you literally had to preface it for, like, a whole-ass paragraph before you got into your, your stunt speech here. What are, you, what are you doing? These words that actually once meant something, and that's what is being done now. This is not the genocide that Israel is engaged in. It, 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 the, the number of Palestinians has increased by fivefold since Israel was created. If that's a genocide, we should all suffer from such a genocide and have such growth of our population. Wow. Yeah, because you can't be doing an ethnic cleansing or a, a genocide if during the period of imprisonment the population goes up. Cool stuff. As regards Iran, so this is a legitimate question. Uh, is, is it in the United States' interest, purely as Americans, that Iran thrive or that there be a regime change? Forget, let's say we can't do a regime change. I understand that. I'm asking in theory, what would be more pro-American? A pro-American Iran, which is a very powerful country and a particularly intelligent people, and uh, what would be better? Having this, these vile theocrats from the Middle Ages who, who kill women uh, and arrest women uh, who, who aren't properly dressed in public. Uh, this is what you guys want us to say it doesn't matter? We left Afghanistan, which, which I assume you guys were supporting, that we should leave Afghanistan. I did not support leaving Afghanistan of because course. I knew the hellhole that the Taliban would create. And I don't know why America first means it's okay if people who want to destroy us take over a country. I don't understand why that's America first. And I have one other comment on America first. Damn. I wrote a column on this, yeah. and I stand by this. This is really important morally. I am America first. My life is a perfect example of, of a lifetime given to defending America and American values. But I am never and will never be America only. There are higher values than just your country. My country is first. But it is not the only moral question in my life. Okay. Thank you, Dennis. Dave, go ahead. Um, okay. Well, I mean, look, if, if I, I think it's kind of a – look, if you're just saying, hey, wouldn't it be great if, like, the repressive Iranian regime was gone and then, like, a regime that came and gave liberty to their people, yeah, sure, that'd be great. That I don't think is necessarily a relevant question. I also don't know who would disagree with you on that. I'm, I'm sure there are some people. I'm certainly not one of them. Um, the fact is well, that Hamas would disagree with me. Right. I'm not one of them. Okay. So you're sort of defending, but you're not one okay. of them. I I'm not agree. even right. kind of defending not, Hamas, but yes. whatever. I'm okay. actually the only okay. one. I'm criticizing Israel for propping them up. But anyway, um, so yes, that would be great. The point is 
that people who supported the war in Iraq, like Benjamin Netanyahu, like I'm sure you did, sir. No, right? I didn't. You didn't. Okay, uh, uh, okay I, so I'm I, wrong. Uh, wait, no, I apologize no, no, for that. Just say very quickly. That's fair. I shouldn't have said that. Then no, no, that's fair. No, no, no. You don't have to apologize. It's it's very understandable that you would assume that I did. Uh, but there was proof. I was on hardball with Chris Matthews, and he was shocked when I told him that I am not supporting us going into Iraq. Okay, once, so I give you a lot of credit for that. We, then. So it's recorded. Did he once, sexually harass let you? Let me just say, no, he did not. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I felt bad about it. But the, uh, uh, but I, 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 get, get it? Because Chris Matthews sexually harassed other people. Ha ha ha. And it's funny because you're old and no no one would sexually harass you. Ha 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 ha. Oh boy. I will I will say though that once we were there, I did believe that we had to prevail. Okay, okay, fine, fair okay, enough. Fair, so let me fair. say I'll I'll amend yeah. that to say all of the uh, neoconservatives, Benjamin Netanyahu, the people who supported us going into the war in Iraq. Oh, what was the effect of that? We handed the country essentially over to Iran. And all of this, this uh, wisdom, which was so ridiculous, that so you had Saddam Hussein, uh, a longtime enemy of Iran. They fought a brutal war together where 500,000 people on, on each side died. By the way, America backed Saddam Hussein while he was doing the most vicious things that he had ever done. Um, he was a, a, a Sunni minority oppressing a Shiite majority. And their scheme was if we overthrow this guy, this will put pressure on Iran to be more democratic. And all that happened was it gave more uh, uh, regional influence to Iran. And then, actually, the attempted regime change in Syria that Obama failed on for multiple reasons, I think actually kind of similarly to what you guys were talking about, he was sending these weapons into the anti-Assad rebels. They saw, as John Kerry admitted, the rise of ISIS. Obama called them JV. I think it's very similar to the way Benjamin Netanyahu looked at Hamas. I can control the height of the flame. And then they invaded Iraq, and he's like, hey, you guys weren't supposed to do that part, right? But what happened, what was the effect of that, was that the uh, Syrians were more reliant on Iran than ever before. What was the effect on the Saudi-U.S. war in, in Yemen? that the Houthis became more reliant on Iran than ever before. So yes, we would all like this magical scenario where Iran becomes a free country, but in reality, the, the policies that Israel, as well as the, most of the neoconservatives in this country have pushed, have been to the opposite effect, has only made Iran more powerful and more influential in the region. Go ahead, Bacha. Oh, I, I don't really disagree with okay. that. Okay. All right. Well, Jake, <laughs> you, you want to say something? All right. Now I'm going to read your book. We're going to wrap this, wrap this segment. Yeah. Right, go ahead. So, a um, bunch of things here. So, uh, are the uh, mullahs in charge of Iran bio theocrats? Yes, they are. And so, I, I was born Muslim. I'm proud to uh, be uh, Muslim culturally, but I'm an atheist now. So, they would consider me an apostate, and trust me that I'd be the first one on the chopping block. So, I got no interest in the mullahs. I got no interest in the Grand Ayatollah. I don't want to help them, support them in one way, and they've destroyed what was a beautiful, awesome culture in Persia. Okay, yeah. so now, having said that, is the, is the answer always war? No. North Korea is a terrible, despotic, tyrannical government. It doesn't mean that we should invade North Korea. Tons of South Koreans would die, Japanese would die, would get embroiled in a horrible war. And with uh, neocons, I always feel like they, they, their slogan is, I forgot the question, but the answer is war. <laughs> Okay, and so we had a deal with Iran under Obama where we stopped their uh, enrichment of uranium and we took all the uranium out of the country. That was a terrific deal. And I criticized Obama a lot, but that was one of the things that I gave him a lot of credit for. It was one of the best things he did. It was maniacal to get out of that deal. Now they're enriching uranium. How did that help? And the only reason why it helps is because the neocons want them enriching uranium, so they have an excuse to start that war. And then Yahoo and Dick Cheney and the others have been very clear with John. John Bolton, Lindsey Graham, all neocons, all very clear. They have wanted this war with Iran for decades now. And they want us to fight it. They want American boys to fight it. They want American yep. taxpayers to finance it. And that is not the right answer. And so, uh, and when you turn back to Israel, what is the one thing that Israel has done that has been a spectacular success in terms of all these conflicts? Was the peace deal with Egypt. 
peace actually works since that not a single bomb has gone between Egypt and Israel and Egypt has complied with the peace treaty so the idea that oh peace then will no won't work because they'll just, you know those Palestinians or those Hamas guys they're just going to do it forever and ever that's exactly what they said about the Egyptians and it wasn't true peace leads to peace it's war leads point. to more war not a good I I agree that like on a basic premise you you either have you either have diplomacy or you have war. You know, it's kind of it's kind of a bi a binary situation, right? And if you give up on diplomacy, then you only have war. Like those are your two options. And as long as Israel like continues to n not truly negotiate in good faith um for like an end to this conflict, like then then there will there will only be war. Why is this panel making me agree with Jenk? Because much like Norm Finkelstein, uh, Jenk is correct on less and less issues as time goes by. And uh, yeah, he he does happen to be good at this one, though. Hey, Matt at the Yahoo. Good yeah. point. I'm go sorry. Ahead, go I, ahead. I wish it were yeah. a good point. I do. I really wish. It's wishful thinking. The Israelis gave a piece of land, I think it's larger than Israel, back to Egypt, filled with oil, a great buffer in case of a war, and they gave every inch back to Egypt because they trusted Egypt, that's why, and they, especially uh, the, uh, the president at the time. So they, that, that's the proof of the point. Israel is not aching to keep Arab land. It is aching for peace. Egypt is mm -hmm. the point that makes my point if they trusted mm -hmm. that the Palestinians would act like the Egyptians, there would have been peace a long time ago. Well, I think, but I, Dennis, I, think you, I know that but back Jane, then, historically, uh, well, 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 the Israelis to, to, did not think, oh, the Egyptians are yeah, wonderful, I mean, we well, can trust them. Jane, they did, they, they did, they did Listen, under, between, under uh, what was his name, the, the great uh, Egyptian Begin? leader. No, the great Sadat. 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 Well, okay, Sadat. Was Sadat. Not the great leader okay, until he got to the peace treaty. Because he came to speak in the parliament. That's what changed okay, their fine. minds. Well, look, well, an Egyptian leader look, comes to the Jewish to parliament. Archangel the, the, the Gabriel. That, and as Thank a libertarian, you for the I don't love this, but the fact is also that the U.S. bribed That's both right. Egypt and Israel with $3 billion a year forever. Yeah, the, the, but, yeah. no, look, the reality is that, Cenk, you have to at least admit there's a point here. Egypt and Israel went to war four times That's right. in... 25 years or yes, something like right. that yes. and they made a peace deal yes. and they gave it up now all i'm saying is that you know what i i do have to say dave smith i am surprised at the depth of his knowledge on this topic because i was not expecting it from him and i know someone like prepped me over in twitch chat that he actually knew his stuff it's still very like surprising every time he opens his mouth and he says like relatively correct stuff it's surprising because again he's a libertarian he he's evil <laughs> you know there's a lot of people today and it's totally understandable that people today would go look things have gotten so bad between the israelis and the palestinians that they're they're just never going to be able to live in peace but at the same no time one says never oh, okay but they can't okay now. let me just finish my point at the same time france and germany are right next to each other man England and Ireland are right next to each other. And that should at least be maybe something all of us could agree on, that it's not that great. And, and by the way, you could go from being like horrific atrocities to a very short period after that, being relatively peaceful with each other. And I do think Jenk at least has somewhat of a point that they did make this land concession for peace deal and it stuck. And that could I be, know, and you're not gonna tell me. Me too, but also, can I make a little bit of a confession? Can I make a little bit of a confession? I loathe libertarians. I kind of also love libertarians. Because they're very funny. They're so goddamn funny, chat. They're, they're, like, like, it, it, there's something satisfying in being able to, like, talk circles around them because they all fall into the same, like, mental traps. I, I I understand Sam Cedar's love when someone calls into his show and is like, "Hello, Sam. I'm a libertarian. I think we shouldn't pay taxes because it's theft." You know, like I I understand how how Sam responds like a 
you know, like an excited puppy. I get it. I get it. They're terrible, but also in like kind of simple and fun ways. Tell me there's not a radical Islam problem in Egypt. They okay, try, that's, they that's try, yes, they tried yeah. to make a, a land for peace deal with the, uh, with the Gazans. They completely withdrew, and they got Hamas yeah. as, a, as, a, as a bonus. Can I ask you, why so, did they, so they, they did not? They, they, to put the they, peace they process in for malbehide in their actually, own words. This is actually worth also, digging into. The, okay. the France-Germany analogy, et cetera, doesn't work, and I'll tell you why. Because Jew hatred, and that is what is, is fundamental to Iran and fundamental to Hamas, not fundamental to all Arabs, but it is fundamental to, to, those, uh, to those ideologies, is exterminationist. No Frenchman wanted to exterminate Germany. No German wanted to exterminate France. That is, by the way, the unique... That is very important that people understand this. Jew hatred is different from all other hatreds, and the world is filled with hatreds because it's exterminationist. The Passover is coming up, and there is in, in the the Passover service is a two thousand year old line. Uh, it's in Hebrew, but I'll say it in English. In every generation, somebody arises to annihilate us, not to oppress us, not to enslave us, to annihilate us. This is unfortunately uh, uh, ancient and recurring. That the and the, we, why why just because okay. people are so possessed right, by right, evil okay, Jew okay, hatred or it does well, seem that well, way. One second, it does seem well, that way. We'll yeah. get Jenkins here because I think it's a legitimate question around the formation from back in 2005, the rise of Hamas because it's a contentious issue and this leads to this. So go ahead. Yeah. So look, the fact that uh, Jewish people across the world have. Uh, basically PTSD from the Holocaust and the pogroms and all of the discrimination and all the massacres that have been visited upon them is super understandable, very, very understandable. But that is part of what is blinding you to the fact that you are no longer David, you are Goliath. And so when, so when you talk about uh, the Germans and the French didn't want to exterminate each other, wait a minute, Germany and Poland are right next to each other and the Germans wanted to extinct, uh, exterminate the Polish and that they were part of the people that suffered uh, extermination under the Holocaust. Uh, and so, and, and there are so many examples of people living side by side who hate each other because they're the two tribes next to each other and they've been warring forever. So again, another example is Greece and Turkey and Cyprus. And what it, uh, if Turkey had decided to keep all of Cyprus when they invaded Cyprus, they would have had to occupy the Greeks for all of these decades. And what would have happened? The Greeks would have done terrorism, right? And we would have had Greeks and Turks killed back and forth, back and forth. Instead, Turkey took about the percentage that they had in the population and let the Greek side go and never occupied them. Occupation is a cancer that always leads to more violence, more terrorism, more conflict, more war. You have to end the occupation. The and is, and, and, and Dennis, one more thing. Old. Look, look, okay. you think that you, okay. you've got this thing in your head that, oh, the whole world hates Jews, and I understand I where did, it comes I from. And, whole, and so, wait, 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 well, why do you say that? I, no, no, you're I talking about the history Jew, of no I said Jew hatred is unique it's exterminationist I don't believe the whole world hates Jews I didn't even imply it okay, okay right. so it Point is to. no yeah. I understand that but look it, that's actually a historical it is not true in the Middle East Jews and Muslims lived together in peace for hundreds of years, sometimes thousands of years. The, the Turks rescued the Jews uh, from the uh, Spanish Inquisition. So there's an enormous history of Muslims and Jews working together until Israel. When in reality, in Europe, the Christians slaughtered the Jews over and over and over again. If you're saying that anyone had an exterminatious uh, ideology against the Jews, it was the Christians in Europe. I'm not, it's not the Christians today. It's a totally different situation. But so, but what you've done is you think that the Palestinians are the Nazis. When the Palestinians are really? David, they're a, 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 dis, a group okay. that has been uh, brutalized for these 75 years, more land taken, more humiliation. Their power, years, water, electricity, their important. energy is controlled by, uh, by Israel. Israel comes in, strips their men naked, parades them around, humiliates them in every way, and now has murdered 25,000 and women and children and you still see as poor little Israel and it's the bad Muslims that are going to exterminate them it, why, whereas you're actually denying them a state you're actually denying them freedom all right go ahead Batya. we're oh, denying yeah. some, they're, they're denying mean, Hamas a state forgive okay. me by the way just want, they're, de they're denying Hamas a state they're denying the PLO a state they're not denying the Palestinians <laughs> when when it was impossible to negotiate and make a state, they were for a Palestinian state. You keep going back to 75 years, which is the giveaway. That's what they believe. We've been occupied for 75 years. 
And as regards Israel being David or Goliath, vis-a-vis -a, -vis a handful oh, of Palestinians, on, they are at militarily they are a Goliath. That is, th okay. and thank God they are. All right. But they are, they are a small. Israel is as tiny as New Jersey. The Arab world goes from the Atlantic Ocean to the Persian Gulf. There are 52 Muslim countries. I uh -huh. wouldn't exactly say David is Goliath. Yeah, okay. this is all right, all right. Well, okay, I'm, sorry. We've got 25 minutes left, and I wanted to bring it back to a U.S. topic, free speech topic that I think would be mm. helpful for uh, the audience. The U.S. Congress, actually the House of Representatives, just uh, yesterday passed a resolution condemning the Palestinian chant, quote, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, affirmed now by our Congress as anti-Semitic. So my question to the panel, and Bhatia, I'd like to st start with you because I know you've spoken on this topic, is do you believe that that chant, from the river to the sea, Palestine oh, will be God, free, she's is gonna give anti a terrible answer. It's so funny because I said to Dennis, um, I hope we can get through the whole debate without the word anti-Semitism okay. because I think it's a real turnoff to people. I think it's irrelevant, really. Like, we're talking about anti-Zionism. It's, you know, we should talk about that. Oh, we're talking about question, Israel. Though. Is that anti-Semitic? Um, uh, okay. uh, you know, we're, we're talking about Israel. And, but, uh, but so the, it's a line from Hamas's charter, okay. okay? So, you know, I have very dear friends who are Palestinian, who are very far left, who would say, like, I don't mean it in an exterminationist way. I mean that that whole land should be a democracy where everybody has civil rights, like in America, and it's a totally secular state. That's what it means to be free. They mean Palestinians will be free just like Jews. That's how I mean it when I say it. That's what they tell me. And I believe them because they're my friends and I love them. Um, but it is a line from Hamas's charter. And so if I, I think it, you know, the burden of proof on the... I, I don't believe that anyone who truly knows what her position on here is could could be friends with her while disagreeing on this topic if if they actually cared about it is on the people chanting it to prove that they don't mean it in an eliminationist way that would wreak havoc and violence on jews like i said because it's part of the charter and you know if somebody was started to walk around chanting a you know a line from another extremely vile terrorist group the burden would be a proof would be on them that they don't mean it in that way I, I, you know on whether it's anti-semitic honestly i really i'm just gonna i'm i'm so not interested in that question i think there's a lot of very good-hearted people on the right who have been so traumatized by the accusations of racism coming from the left they're just so sick of that and so i'll just stay with that like i i don't they've know been, they've been traumatized by accusations okay well I, I really honestly i hate when congress passes resolutions that have to do with speech it makes me very uncomfortable but at the same time i think you know J jews don't like hearing this because it makes them think of hamas so it's there's a tension there i don't like government getting involved and i, I honestly i'm very offended by the idea that jews need to be protected from chanting like okay. i i feel like Hey, Archangel Gabriel. Hey, Jack and Chap. Been watching the YouTube VODs for a long time. Forgot to follow on Twitch. Well, thank you very much for rectifying that. I certainly appreciate it. What the fuck is she saying? She's saying they called me racist for being racist. Yes, I, I, I would agree with that. It, like, she's so incoherent. My God. Like, we're descended from the Maccabees, and we need to man up, and it's not dangerous, and it's not scary, but it is kind of gross. Okay. <laughs> That's right. where I am. Dave, go ahead. Well, I, I appreciate that last thing you said. Look, I mean, the, the United States of America's federal government should absolutely never even get involved in what they feel about a chant. That is an outrage in a professed free society. I do not care what anybody in Congress feels about a chant. Whether you think it's anti-Semitic or not, you can yell anything anti-Semitic, anything anti-black anything anti-woman, anything anti-Muslim, because this is the United States of America, and we have a right to say what we want to say. The First Amendment is very clear. Federal government, get out of anything having to do with speech. So that, now, I kind of more or less agree with you. I've talked to different people. Good night, there are Lusa. certainly some people who swear up and down. They don't mean anything against the Jews. They just mean that, like, hey, they wish the Palestinians who were refugees could return to where they came from. I think there's definitely other people who mean something against the Jews when they say that. I think that's kind of the nature of this conflict. Well, um, and I mean, yeah, that, like, there's definitely one subset of people who definitely feel that way. They're called neo-Nazis. And, and this protest, I'll but so, uh, yeah. go ahead. Well, okay, by the way, I agree with you on the free speech issue. I'm, I'm virtually an absolutist, and uh, I'm uh, very afraid of the American future because 45% of young Americans say 
that they believe in free speech except for hate speech, <laughs> which means that they don't believe in free speech. Yeah. So uh, the, the left, the, the, the left has done a real great job in yeah. undermining the Constitution uh, on, on the most important principle, probably the First Amendment. That's okay. So we, God, De Dennis Prager will never not seem like a like like a weird time traveler, like a carnival barker from like the early 1800s. Suddenly, time traveled to you know the modern day. Like he seems he seems like a man out of time, not complimentary. We, uh, a rare uh, moment of agreement here on that. Well, that, if we that, go to dinner later, I bet it won't be that rare. We okay. probably may, may, maybe. Yeah. Right. Why, what are these horseless carriages whizzing on by? It's, but uh, right. on, on the, the phrase, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, even in its most innocuous, yes, we'll just have a secular state and we'll all get along hunky-dory and kumbaya. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I do believe that with 22 Arab states, the need for a 23rd is not particularly essential. I think one Jewish state on the face of the earth, the size of New Jersey, smaller than El Salvador, is a perfectly okay idea. There is a Hindu state called India. There are non-Hindus in it, but the Hindus, it is a Hindu state and Hindus make the majority. I'm happy that there is a Hindu state. There aren't two Hindu states, and Nepal may, may theoretically be considered one, but there's really one. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. It's right yeah, up your alley, yeah, so you know, and, and that's why I'm a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I didn't I, want to interject too much. No, 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 but, but I, I know yeah. a lot about India because, yeah. as I told you earlier, yeah, I, right. I, I love that's visiting right. there. I've been there in quite a number of times. Uh, but so, uh, yes, at, the, at its least violent, from the river to the sea means no more Jewish state. And if one is intellectually honest, one acknowledges that. Okay. I think Jake, I agree with Jake, that. Jake, Jake, I, oh, I want good. you to That's go. Big. Oh, okay. That's so, important. Uh, I, I call that chant a dumb chant and not a good idea, and I'll, I took a lot of heat from people on my side. And so I said, look, if some people think that it's a genocidal chant, why do it? It's counterproductive. It doesn't make sense. Now, having said that, Netanyahu said the same exact thing. So Congress is a joke. Are they condemning Netanyahu? Because he said, from the river to the sea. The Likud and Party's founding charter has almost the same thing. It's like everything west Hey, of look, he actually brought it up. I, the, look, this guy knows some things. I'm impressed by it. Usually libertarians are just going... Blah, 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 the entire time. And then they fart with a little bit of shit in it. Of the Jordan River yeah. or something like and that. How about everybody who says Judea and Samaria? That is the same thing. That Israel gets to control from the river to the sea. So that is genocidal. That is exterminationist. So let's be honest. Let's be principled. Let's apply things equally. Of course, mm -hmm. our Congress never does that. Yes, because of the donors and the lobbyists, and and everyone out there knows that. Uh, and so when you talk about. Uh, a state, and so this, this is a part of why I, I don't understand two things that Dennis is saying. So number one, on the 22 Arab states, so what? It's, that's not the issue. Well, are you going to drive them into that? That's ethnic cleansing. If we, if the, yep. again, the, going back to the uh, Turkish analogy, if the Turks said, what, there's all these Christian countries. What do you, I don't want the Armenians. Why don't you guys take them? Well, just drive them into Russia. We'll drive them into Georgia. We'll drive them into Europe. You guys take them. There's all those, there's like 30, 40 Christian states there. What do we want with them? And then when you, look, I don't want a one state solution in either direction and again that will antagonize some people on my side because what is the if we have a one-state solution where everybody actually gets to vote and it's not an apartheid state the Palestinians will outvote the uh, Jews in Israel right and then the Jewish state doesn't exist anymore Israel shouldn't agree to that Israel's never going to agree to that and I agree with that but it, so okay so that one what? state solution what? is definitely wrong but, Dennis, I don't know what you think is I not now, oh, wait, but sorry. not permanent. Misheard I don't him. know if it's two years, 20 years, whatever it is. But that indefinite occupation is one state, but five and a half million people are living under apartheid government. Well, you could use any word you like, apartheid, occupation, imprisonment, but they, they clearly have no rights. They have no rights. They have and so that rights. one that's state solution that, is you, a disaster. See, that, that's again, God, here the we were. I was, I was celebrating how much we agreed on, and now, or now you blew it. Yeah. <laughs> they have rights. They don't have complete rights. That is true. There is such a thing. What do you mean, black people don't have rights under Jim Crow? They've got rights. They, now, they might not have the same rights, 
but they've got rights. That that that's literally that's literally Dennis Prager right now. You want you want to know where there's no right? There's no rights in North Korea. You use the North Korea example. There are no rights in Iran. Basically, there are plenty. There are plenty of rights. They don't have the right to their to uh, a foreign policy. They don't have a right to have an army. They don't have a right to have you, a police you think it's force. Clear that in Gaza, uh, uh, there's more freedom than in Iran. Oh, Mac nine nine one three five. Conservatives have always had a double standard when it comes to free speech. It's always been a, you know, free speech for me, but not for thee type situation. You could, like, like back in the day, back in the 1980s, you could be, like, arrested and beaten to death for, like, talking back to a cop, okay? Like, or, or like, saying a swear word or taking the Lord's name in vain on a Sunday. Like, you could literally be arrested for all kinds of insane language stuff. Do I think that in Gaza there's more freedom than in Iran? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Okay. Oh, you mean? Oh no, I, I was thinking of Hamas. You're thinking of Israel. I I'm think not, Hamas. No, no, I'm just, oh no, no, no. Saying regardless, Hamas, re Hamas represses the freedom, not the Israelis. So in the West oh, Bank, you think on. they're yeah, substantially Jesus. freer than in Iran? Yes, that's correct. That's what I believe. How yes. could they be free at all? Look at what they just did to them. The minute okay. they, there was a conflict, they say, we cut off your water, electricity, no, power. No, the minute your, there was a conflict. Your okay. okay. He said, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay, look. And you, you keep yeah, saying, true you keep yeah. saying, yeah. is it two years? Is it 10 years? I keep telling you that if, what would, what would have somebody have said to an American? What are you, what are you going to do? Are you going to occupy Germany forever? No, as soon as the Nazis give up. We, we will have, and there were occupied zones, by the way. There was French, Soviet, and, and uh, United States and British. There were four occupied zones in, in Germany, and it became one of the freest countries on the face of the earth. And, Ger and Germany. Oh. So you, you're just gonna, you're just gonna, okay, so the plan is to just Germany it. You're gonna, you're gonna occupy it for another 50 years, and then suddenly it'll be all fine somehow. Gotcha. Cool. Cool stuff. Excellent. And folks, just want to say, we've now been going for four and a half hours. If you've been enjoying the show, finding it interesting, finding it funny, um, consider hitting the follow button on Twitch. Hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Like the goddamn YouTube stream. I was about to berate you for not being over 100 likes, but it just ticked over 101. Good job, everybody. You averted my wrath. Anyway, uh, <laughs> also, folks, of course, please consider dropping those sweet, sweet subs and donos because they are what allow me to live. Drop those memberships. Drop those super chats. Drop the biddies. Drop, you know, what the, the monetary values. There we go. Nailed it. The Soviets did do some ethnic cleansing. Yeah, they were bad. Holy shit, Jack. I always get here late. It's okay, Central Scrutinizer. Hey, Loki Fox. It looks like you chillin'. I, I love Lucid Fox's emotes. Some of the cutest emotes in the biz. Anyway. Uh, subs and donos allow me to not die and make content. Moving right along. Let's go. Germany was for Germany. That, that, yeah, okay, because they had no choice. Israel, we, we already established that Israel gave up an immense amount of land to Egypt because so they understood. You, are you advocating the type of uh, bombing campaign that we committed on Germany, on Gaza? No, I'm not advocating, well, I but. Mean, this no, is no, the model you're no, going no, back the, to. The, no, the better. Well, I don't, that's not a, a response to what I was talking about. You were talking about occupation. But, but fair enough. So my answer to you is I don't know. And by the way, neither do you. What would you want is. What do, I, I never hear the people who were anti Israel. To answer the question, what would you want Israel to have done on October 8th? 
Okay, I'll answer let's have an Yes, I do want. I do want to hear an answer. I want to hear both. I want to answer yeah. both of you because it's sure. a great, great so, question. Okay, so I think the for the most important thing to understand is kind of what we were talking about before, right? Is like what, and I'm answering your question here, but just saying, keeping in mind what was going on before October 7th, which was for years, as we've all conceded here, that they, uh, the Israeli government was propping up Hamas and also had this very arrogant attitude, like we can control the height of the flame, like Obama talking about ISIS. They're JV. You're not answering my question. I said I. Man, he keeps talking about controlling the height of these flames. Zuko. Uh, Central Scrutinizer, thank you for the 100 biddies. I appreciate it. Keeping some of the BWA spirit alive. Let's go. Literally said, no, said no, no, no. what should Israel have done? See, this is now you're just trying no, to bully no, no, me. No, no, I literally I, said, okay, okay, Dennis, I said, let me just give you a little bit of background. Okay, no, because I'm leading up. into what the answer yeah. is. Right. So again, my point is, well, the first of all, no more doing that. No more propping up Hamas and underestimating them. Listen, the idea October 7th was not even like 9-11. It wasn't even like, oh, there was planes used as missiles into a building. We never could have seen this coming. They can say that intelligence report was on Bush's desk, but he got thousands of intelligence reports. And it's not like it said the World Trade Center. What happened on October 7th was the thing that Israelis should have been concerned about the whole time. So number one, all it takes was not relying on the, uh, the, mach the robot machine guns and having the, uh, a military presence at the border. So immediately secure your borders. Number two, a real investigation into what happened on October 7th. What were the failures here? How did it take so long for the response time? Not this Netanyahu, we'll wait till the war's over and then we'll figure out, like it's always, it's not the time. No, I think after that, um, Netanyahu should resign in disgrace. Then, in terms of the, the actual response, as Israel always did before Netanyahu, they always uh, dealt with the terrorism problem, with assassination campaigns, with special operations. They, Gaza is the most um, uh, monitored place on the planet. They can pick these guys off the, and the, even more important than that They're is immediately, let me finish my answer. Uh, that, uh, yeah, but those are the guys they're still negotiating with uh, to try to get the hostages out. The other thing is the number one priority should have been the hostages. And the, 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 it is self-evident that when you're fighting a war this way, your number one priority is not to get your people out. Look, Israel has all the chips. They got a ton of hostages, excuse me, prisoners of their own that they could exchange for the hostages sit there, which is how they've gotten the hostages they've gotten so far out. And then after all of that, after the hostage swaps, after assassination campaigns and special ops, you come to the table with a real two-state agreement again. You rise above it. Instead of turning the world against you, you win the world over by saying, listen, we took a big loss. We're going to kill or, or get the people who did this to us, but we are not just going to make life hell for the people of Gaza anymore. We're going to offer them their freedom. Okay. And I think there was a real opportunity to do Jake, that. you want to answer the question, what should have yeah. Israel done on October yeah. 8th? So I said this right from the get-go after it happened. So first of all, going with special forces, people say it's hard. Yeah war is hard. And so uh, when they started dropping bombs on the buildings, I was like, wait, what if the hostages are in the buildings? And and I thought you said Hamas is in the tunnels. A very reasonable question to ask, Jenk, and one I have yet to hear a satisfactory response about from uh, the state of Israel, weirdly enough. So how does it help? Hey, Drago, how you doing? It's not like Hello, the, Mr. And, Anderson. And Israel brought in CNN. They showed them the tunnels at one point in the conflict about three months ago. And I they missed were you. totally unaffected by the bombing. Too. So, it, the, again, it, the idea that they didn't target civilians is just counter to every fact in front of us. So instead, I would have wanted them to target Hamas to try to rescue the hostages. And then the most important part is this is the time for a peace deal. So in the middle of nothing happening, Netanyahu isn't going to, uh, or anyone else, isn't going to rise up and be like, oh yeah, you know what, let's do a peace deal now. No, peace deals happen after conflict and after war. And so here we have already had six months of some of the worst conflict and war we have seen. This is when you make a peace deal. And how do you do it? Let's be specific about it, because you can, it's not just generic. You do a deal with the Palestinian Authority, 
And then once they have the credibility of Britain delivering a Palestinian state, they then come back into Gaza and drive Hamas out. So if you say that's going to be difficult, of course it's going to be difficult. Every part of this is difficult, right? But at least then they would have the credibility. We delivered the Palestinian state. And then that way they can drive out Hamas. And that goes to Batia's earlier point. Look, the people of Gaza are devastated by what's happened. They're not exactly, you know, thrilled about what Hamas did. And yeah, like, where is this jank? Where is this jank lately on, on TYT? Where, where, where's this guy? I remember this guy. This is the guy I, I, was res I, I respected when I was coming up in my, my political evolution. Happy 420 to you as well, Mr. Anderson. Hope you have a good holiday. Don't let me interrupt the saggy. No interruption. It's all good. In a lot of ways, if the Palestinian Authority delivers and Hamas didn't, then they have the credibility to oh, actually manage that state. Oh, congrats on your moving state. out. And you've got to, look, if you're looking at it strictly from an Israeli point of view, you've got to get rid of the occupation. It is an albatross around your neck. It makes the world hate you. It makes you look like an international pariah. And it creates nonstop conflict because no human beings on earth, no race, no ethnicity is ever going to say, okay, I accept being occupied and I will now bow my head to you. No, they will always fight you. And look at what Netanyahu just said. He said, I'm never going to give them a state. That means permanent war. That is definitely not the answer. Yep. The answer is make that peace deal today. Bacha, go ahead. I mean, neither of you has mentioned actually Netanyahu's biggest crimes since October 7th, which I think from my point of view are, number one, there was a plan on the table to find, to identify Fatah members living in Gaza and to have them train in Jordan to become a police force in Gaza with the cooperation of Israel, and he nixed that. And that was a plan that was handed to him on a silver platter that would have given them the credibility that, you know, they need. He also um, allowed um, Bezalel Smotrich to nix a plan to allow flour into Gaza mm -hmm. through um, Ashkelon, again, another thing that would have made it easier for Joe Biden not to do this sort of epic flip-flop. So I'm not saying that there are not mistakes that have been made. I think those two mistakes some, are... Some little goofs that have been goofed, you know, just a couple little uh, itty-bitty tiny mistakes, you know, and uh, don't talk about how many people died. I mean, incomprehensible to me. Um, but everything else you guys described is exactly what Israel was doing. The reason they have dropped these 2,000 ton bombs was to get at the tunnels. You keep saying, oh, they didn't get to the tunnels. That's why they were using so many more munitions. And yet, the, I keep coming back to this, but the combatant to civilian ratio was not higher than it was in Fallujah, despite the fact that they were using such heavier artillery because they were doing that in order to access these shelters. I agree with you both that they made a decision that, the, that getting rid of Hamas was more important than the hostages. I think that, again, when Netanyahu meets his maker, as you say, he will have to, you know, answer for that. I, I, don't, I, I don't know what the right question— Yeah, look, they just need to drop enough bombs, okay? Once they hit the magic number of bombs, the problem will be solved answer to that question was but i guess i would ask you guys like does the will of the israeli people in terms of it being a sovereign nation play no role here i mean aside from the fact that i think that the plans you guys described is pretty close to what the israelis were actually doing um you know d does the will of the people in terms of you know the polling suggesting that you know, Israel is less divided about, you know, the need for military action right away. I mean, Dave, like, is it tolerable to you to live in a world where that man sitting on Shani Luke's broken, stripped body is allowed to live? Like, I, I feel that it's intolerable to me to live in sure. a world where that man so is allowed really, okay. to live. That's a, a really good ask, question. Jesus Christ. The level of like bloodthirstiness is kind of in, is kind of just off the charts. Well, she just asked me. I, I, so. I want to hear. So, well, well, I, I would just say that. Look, um, certainly, like I get the the feeling that you have. Like, is it is it like intolerable that there wouldn't be revenge taken against this person? It's not revenge. Person? It's justice. Okay. Sure, right, justice. Right, so. Whatever you want to call it. it's basically synonyms. 
Um, but yes, that you would get the guy who did that is the point. All I'm saying, if that was a family member of mine, I'd certainly feel the same way. I would also point out, you have to also put yourself in the position of the Palestinians that there's been lots of those people for them too. The, my point is that as a government, as a policy, no, the priority should be getting the hostages mm -hmm. back, not getting justice or revenge or whatever you want to call it. I'm not saying that shouldn't be a close second priority, but the number one priority is that there are still uh, innocent hostages who are alive. Right. We should so, get them so back. That, so that now, goes Dan, to my second question, well, which yes, is, if you want yes, justice, does what the Israelis wanted first matter to you? Like, as a what? in terms of sovereignty, in terms of it, that question. If you want to talk about national sovereignty, then look, no, you're no, no, asking no, me. Yeah. Do you well, think it on. matters yeah. what you're, the Israelis wanted? Ahead, let yes. Let uh, listen, I'm responding yeah. to your okay, point. Okay, if you're talking about national sovereignty, you, I was asked a question about how I think Israel should respond, and I gave you the answer. Yes. In terms of the argument of what the Israeli people want for their government to do, if you're going to make that nationalistic argument, fine. Keep my tax dollars out of it. Okay? Let America not be a part of it. We do not have to pick fights in a battle uh, thousands of miles away. It, is, it was the advice of all of the founders, they were unanimous on this, that this would be the death of our country if we embarked in these entangling alliances. Okay. That's my position. Right, so America Dennis shouldn't be Jane, involved. And we're, we're almost out of time, so go ahead, Dennis. Okay. So uh, I asked, what would you like uh, Israel to do? And uh, finally, when an answer was given, they should pick off Palestinian leaders and make and make an offer for a state. So uh, you you commit these horrors, kill uh, more Jews than uh, were killed in a day since the Holocaust, and we're offering you a state. I would think that the, uh, the we're rewarding them for bad behavior. That that's essentially his argument here. That the lesson that the Palestinians would learn is hey. October 7th really worked. Look, the Israelis are, so, are sort of giving up, and they're not even striking us. What a great deal. Uh, it, it, it would be that, like the United States after Pearl Harbor going, look, Japan, we understand you have interest in, in the Far East, and uh, we, we, we would like to accommodate you now. That, that would have been the, the, uh, the analogy that I, I would think. Um, the, yeah, so it would be a reward of atrocities. It, it would be... Uh, counterproductive from an Israeli standpoint. And uh, I, I keep going back to this. Well, yeah, it would be a counterproductive from an Israeli standpoint because the Israeli standpoint is, like, remove them by any and all means. Even Israelis who want two states have given up for the time being, and I keep answering for the time being, should Palestinians change? 70% of Palestinians support what happened on October 7th. But I got to say, the most depressing thing was what you said, like you say, atrocities on both sides. Your moral equivalence troubles me. Uh, that, that's the most disturbing thing I've heard in the two hours we've had together. Yeah, Israel would never commit atrocities, guys. Don't look at IDF tick. Don't look at IDF TikTok. But they'd never do atrocities and then film themselves bragging about them. Anyway. That uh, when she mentioned the, this, this woman who was murdered and her half-naked body paraded, and you said, well, you, I have lots of those people too. Not, lots of Palestinians. Really? Can you name one instance of an, a Palestinian woman paraded naked by Israelis? No, that's not what I was saying. What were you saying? I, just meant I, I was just saying. Tons I, and tons of. I mean, first you, of, no, no, you okay. were responding to the specific example of that Israeli. I'm that saying Israeli the woman. feeling that somebody, a family member, would have of their family member being killed and wanting to get justice against oh, okay, that person. Yeah. Okay. There's been lots of that oh, on the okay. other side oh, yeah. as well. Right. That's my. Well, I have this very heinous example. Do you have a heinous example? No, no, I, I, I don't. I'm just saying, like, people, people on both sides are having family members die. <laughs> like, like, my God. My point. Right. That's the but, same way that somebody would join up with Hamas because their little brother got killed in some Israeli strike. Right. Okay. That's the okay. point that I'm making. All right. Okay. So, All right. uh, yeah. so by Jake, the way, one other and one other yeah. point: the Israeli opposition. You guys, even even my dear Vatya, and she is a dear soul, uh, is you not on the uh, not on the Netanyahu bandwagon. By the way, I'm not on the Netanyahu bandwagon, and I'm not on the anti-Netanyahu bandwagon. I don't give a hoot who the Prime Minister of Israel is, okay. for a very good reason. 
The opposition in Israel, the left-wing opposition, has announced we would, they hate Netanyahu and have announced we would do the exact same thing he is doing. Okay. That is relevant. Okay. All right. Jenk, go yeah. ahead, respond, and try and keep it to two minutes, and then I'll get a last statement from everybody. Okay. okay. All right. So, uh, oh, my God. Did we make it through the entire thing? Oh, my God. We're so close. Uh, that last thing that Dennis said is deeply problematic for a reason I'll come back to. So first of all, on the sovereignty issue that Vanya made, you know, you, know, you got sovereignty to do anything you like, just not with our money. So And the uh, $4 billion we're sending uh, every year immediately, as long as they keep doing the occupation. Uh, $14 billion is unconscionable, shouldn't send a dollar of taxpayer money. Don't tell me you want sovereignty and then uh, come and ask us, demand us. Uh, of our money and our weapons, et cetera. No way. Number two, you said that Israel's been trying to give them a state. That's not remotely true for the last 25 years, quarter of a century. They have not made any effort. In fact, they have gone exactly the opposite. Netanyahu was saying, I will never give them a state. They have is, is propped up Hamas to make sure the Palestinians can never uh, have a state. So they have been the obstacle to peace. If you say Hamas is an ob obstacle to peace, Netanyahu is 10 times the obstacle to peace. When you talk about... Um, uh, kill ratios, and you say, well, isn't Hamas terrible because of what they did to these civilians? I always agree, right? Our side constantly says, yes, that is terrible. But when we say, okay, now when Israel did it 30 times worse, isn't that an atrocity? You go, how dare you? Of course it's not an atrocity because by definition, Israel. That's not an argument. It is they, they've now killed 25,000. Imagine a basketball arena full of women and children, and Israel has killed them all. And are you yep. saying that the IDF is the most incompetent military in the world? Golly gee, we accidentally murdered 25,000 women and children by dropping 2,000 bombs on their schools, hospitals, and buildings? That's not an accident. We accidentally killed all the humanitarian, the, not all, but a lot of the humanitarian workers, the journalists, etc. Oh, by the way, the accidents including sniper bullets to the neck. These are not accidents in your world. Israel can do no wrong, so if they do it, it must be because they were defending themselves and the dastardly Palestinians deserved everything they had coming, including the imprisonment for uh, 75 or 57 years. Pick your uh, uh, answer. And look, you say that you can't have the idea of a Hamas leader uh, being alive. That bothers you. You should be killed. Well, Netanyahu has now killed 30 times as many people. So do the Palestinians then get to use your logic and say, I can't stand to have Netanyahu okay. alive. Right. I want him dead. All right, so we're going to have Jenk we've only got a couple minutes left, literally Jenk, two Jenk minutes. Did, so try everybody keep a one minute. Jenk actually stayed off the stupid juice for one entire show. That that's that's great. I love seeing that. Response. I would I would phrase it this way instead of trying to respond to a simple question. Let's just take uh, the last thing you would like the audience to be able to take away with. So, Batya, we'll go ahead and we'll start with you. I wanted to open with this, but I'm going to close with it instead. Um, I'm going to mention all of the areas of common ground that we have here mm. because That's there was so much of it. Um, the first is I think we all agree that Hamas are terrorists who terrorize Israelis and Palestinians and the world would be better off without them. I think we all agreed that Israel had a moral obligation to respond in some way militarily to what happened on October 7th. Um, I think we all agreed that there are many innocent Palestinians in Gaza and every death is tragic of those innocents. I think we all agree that if we could immediately remove innocent civilians from the line of fire, we would. I think we all, or at least three of us, agreed that Netanyahu has made major mistakes in the past and in the present. And I think that we all agreed that ultimately we would like to see every person living from the river to the sea living in dignity with full civil rights. Okay. And so I'm so grateful to have had this experience. See, but th that's the thing. that This is one of the fundamental things that people in her camp don't get. Israel has no interest or intent to grant full civil rights to all Palestinians. If that if that was their intent, they could they could have done that a long time ago. They could have just annexed all of this integrated Palestinians into Israel for a for for a one-state solution. They could have they could have done that a long time ago. They're not into this. and found all of this common ground with you all. Well said. All right, thank you about you. Dave, why don't you go ahead? Um, sure. Uh, okay, so it was about 200 years ago that Thomas Jefferson <laughs> had this great quote, I do believe it was in 1824, uh, where he was speaking about slavery, and he said, I might butcher this a little bit, but he said, we've got the wolf by the ear, yes. and we can neither afford to hang on to it nor let it go. 
And I think this was a common uh, uh, objection to abolitionists that people at the time had. They were like, look, we've enslaved these people for so long. If we let them go now, they're going to kill all of us. And you could kind of see where that was reasonable at the time, to be concerned about that. But with 200 years of hindsight, we can all look at this and go, yeah, but you can't enslave people. And whatever problem comes after that, you just have to abolish this. And that's kind of the same way I feel about the occupation of the West Bank and Gaza. It's been since 1967, man. You just can't do this to people anymore. Mr. Praker used the example of World War II over and over and over again today. And I know I'm not a left winger, Jenk is, and the rest of us aren't. But I know when I say, hey, we should make a peace deal after October 7th, a lot of people go, oh, that sounds wimpy and left wingy. But how about forget the lessons of World War II? How about the lessons of Vietnam and Korea and Iraq and Afghanistan and Ireland. Syria and Libya and Somalia and Yemen and a million others? Actually, we should be striving for peace. This isn't anything like World War II. This is a group of people who have been totally dominated by Israel since at least 1967. Israel isn't going anywhere. From the river to the sea is never going to happen. But these people. I'm actually really impressed, and I, I feel like any. Any further exposure to this man is going to shatter this veneer of like, oh, wow, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, the least dumb take from Dave here, which is insane to me. This is biggest, biggest heel, you know, biggest baby face turn of the night, I guess. People can be given their Good night, freedom tipster. and peace can be achieved. Okay, well said, so Dave. Go ahead, Dennis. So I, I would love that, too. Uh, right now, most Palestinians would like to get rid of a Jewish state. I wish that weren't true. Yeah, be, that might have something to do with the 26,000 children that have been killed so far, Dennis. Might might have something with something to do with like them looking up in the sky and seeing death rain down uh, on their neighborhoods and IDF soldiers joyously bulldozing their their front yard. Like might might have something to do with that. Yeah. May, pa oh man, my God! Surprise, surprise! Palestinians not not a huge fan when their house gets bulldozed by the IDF. Uh, oh, that's crazy! I, who could have predicted? True. If it weren't true, I do believe there would be peace. I think that that is the honest approach. Uh, I just have to say, even though it's my final statement, I I I, I nevertheless have to respond. The the comparisons you make. Are, are, are remarkable. I mean, that the slavery of blacks and the, the status of Palestinians are comparable? For, what an, it's such an insult to blacks. All you... Why you gotta say it like that? What? What? Full enunciation. My goodness. Uh, again, he's like a time traveler from 1820, you know? Suffered was what Palestinians no, suffered? No, it's a logical analogy. No, it's that not a logical. Same, same. Well, yeah, no, okay. that, that it's oh. not logical because no. it's not analogous. That's that's the point. You can't have a logical analogy if it's not analogous. Okay. Okay, so right. one final word. The pariah state of Israel. That is correct. That was what, uh, in fact, Chuck Schumer said Israel twice in his talk, uh, that Israel is a pariah state. There's a reason that Israel is a pariah state. It's because the left-wing media in the world have decided to declare, along with Muslim countries, and uh, Israel a pariah state. So here is just a couple of statistics that are worthy of noting. In the last few years, 500,000 people have been killed in a breakaway province in Ethiopia called Tigray. Now, one yep. of you watching this probably knows about it. I don't know if anybody on this panel knows about it. I, I know about it. 500 I, I did a show about it thousand slaughtered and about 80,000 rapes is Ethiopia a pariah state of course not because they're not Jews so nobody gives a damn how about this 60,000 I I'm pretty sure that like you're you're describing like a pariah type situation where like you know, you're ostracized to such an extent that nobody gives a damn. I, you're like, you're like describing <laughs> the pariah <laughs> and justifying like not giving a damn. <laughs>
This whole zero hedge panel is weak. I know. That's why we're watching it. Thousand uh, Christians have been slaughtered in West Africa uh, since 2000. They've been slaughtered by Muslim groups. Does anybody call the Muslim groups pariahs or any Muslim country a pariah? Of course. Yeah. I, I, I think we should, maybe. I think that would be okay if we did. I think it'd be okay if we condemned those things. Yeah. Of course not, because nobody gives a damn about the black Christians of West Africa because they're not being killed by Jews. Uh, hey, hey, Dennis, do you have any opinions about Ethiopian Jews in, uh, in Israel and the uh, forced sterilization of them by the state? Do, uh, you got, you got, any, uh, got any thoughts there on that one? Hmm, no? Oh, that's weird. Anyway. That's the reason Israel is a pariah state. Nobody would like to acknowledge it. It's painful. But the truth is often painful. Okay. All right. Cenk, go yeah. ahead. So after the Palestinian Christians under the bombs. Oh, Mac. He, he doesn't care. After 57 years of occupation, Israel's the victims, and they're special victims. Okay. So, look, I care about both Israeli civilians and Palestinian civilians. And so... If you say, oh, well, you know, brilliant point about slavery. I said it about the North and the South before. Before, Hey, the, uh, the black slaves would get rid of a white state. We can't have it. We can't have it. If we free them, they're going to, they could kill us all. And they are so against the white state. They're so against America. We can never let them go. By the way, that is what is said in every occupation, in every empire, in every war. And after every war, they say, oh, look at how many of theirs, uh, of our people they killed. They killed our women, our children, etc. We can't can't make peace with them and what does that lead to it leads to more war more killings both on the Israeli side and the Palestinian side it peace gets the peace war gets the war at some point and this is the point we have to say stop going towards war what are we bombing Iraq well yeah like like this is the thing if you just write off the entire concept of talking to your enemy despite the fact that you are at, the, at war if you just don't talk to your enemy there is no peaceful solution. The only path towards a peaceful solution is diplomacy. And if you give up on diplomacy, then there's only war. Like, that's, that's the thing. And all of the communication from every senior member of the Israeli government indicates that they are absolutely not at all interested in genuine diplomatic communication. for are we nuts we want a giant war in the middle east that drags us into it to, robs us of trillions of dollars let alone uh, our kids who can get killed there let alone the potentially millions of people who can kill the the moral cancer here that is causing every problem we're talking about is the occupation you have to let them go if you're israel you have to let them go if you don't let them go this conflict and this war will never end. And then you can call it any name you like. You can say, oh, they're terrorists True. and we're the good guys. But it doesn't matter because more Israelis are going to die and more Palestinians are going to die. Let's do peace right now. Okay. Uh Excellent statement by Cenk. And I did not think I would ever say that again after the last segment we did on uh, stuff Cenk says. But well done, Cenk. Zero Hedge would like me to extend a thank you to tonight's sponsor, Public Square, for supporting free speech and open debate. If you want to, have I read through Israeli government officials' twitters? No, but I, I've watched enough interviews where they're like talking about like leveling the entirety of Gaza to make parking lots for settlements. You know, like they the the stuff they say on Israeli television is unhinged to an extreme that is difficult to articulate. Yeah, many of the uh, Palestinian diaspora still have keys to their old houses.
want to learn about them, you should re-listen to Dave's ad. Uh, I want to extend a thank you to all of you. You guys were, uh, for the most part, very cooperative, and you were great and respectful to each other, and I think people will really get a lot out of it. And I want to thank you, Zero Edge, for inviting me uh, to do this. So thank you, everybody, for watching, and we will see you all later. You can find any of these great people. Uh, I believe we'll have links, at least on my channel, I'll have links in the description where people can go and find them, and I highly recommend. All right. Folks! We did it! We did it, everybody! We did it! We made it through! We're still alive! <sighs> Do I have any real closing thoughts on that? Jank performed better than I thought. The Libertarian performed better than I thought. Um... I don't think it was pretty particularly effective at actually moving anybody over, even in, in audience form. Um, a lot of the rhetoric was pretty messy. Um, I, I always enjoy seeing Dennis Prager enter into debates, but I always wish... If, if there are more than two people, I always wish it'd be a one-on-one -on -one debate because Dennis Prager is very bad at arguing. Like, he's very predictable and, you know, he has, he has his go-to lines, you know? He, he's, he's made too many coconut islands, okay? And so, like, for me, it's like, oh, you're playing the old classics, old man. You know, it's there's something comforting about watching uh, Dennis Prager get completely blown the fuck out uh, in a debate. I know this is slightly off topic, but remember that debate he had with Anna before she went full idiot? Like, remember how they made the mistake of facing his disturbing fucking face towards the camera? I can't be the only one. I do remember that debate. It was it was a nice moment. Also, I think I look really cute today. I'm going to say it. I think I also look very sleepy. Hmm. Well, folks, we've been going for 5 hours. If you've been enjoying the show, please hit the follow button on Twitch. Subscribe button on YouTube. Like the goddamn YouTube stream. And folks, consider dropping those sweet, sweet subs and donos because this show, at the end of the day, is brought to you by viewers like you. And thank you. And thank you, Amber Brains and Lady Rainglad. I appreciate you and Sanugan. Thank you. Yeah, but I'm feeling, like, confident today. I think it gives me, like, a little bit of, like, a... I don't know. A je ne sais quoi. Um, tomorrow, and by that I mean later today, folks, we will be getting a relatively early start, or, you know, mid-afternoon. We'll be doing some uh, kitchen nightmares. And then transition into Hell's Kitchen, which should be very, very fun. And um, I'm excited. I'm sad that you guys didn't unlock the, uh, the, the, the subscription surprise. But that's okay. How many Gordos do we have? I believe you have two Gordos left. Only two episodes of Kitchen Nightmares. And then we're into Hell's Kitchen, baby. And you have two of those saved up. Carry it over? Hmm. Maybe. We'll see. And, uh... We're probably not close, right? Nah, you're not. Um... So, I will be streaming tomorrow. Make sure you tune in. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a loosey-goosey stream. And um, I, you know, hope you have a good day tomorrow. That, that, I, that's all I'll say. Um, 
Thank you so much for a wonderful stream. Eleanor, I'm glad you enjoyed it. The, like, what was that? That that segment was enormous. I don't know why it took us so long to get through all of that. What time is stream? I don't know when I'll be starting tomorrow. Um, but my God, was that was that segment fun? I like I'll break it up into like three different segments for YouTube, I guess. But like, I hope you all enjoyed that. <laughs> Still haven't beaten the tree sentinel. Just walk around it and come back later. <sighs> that was mental cock and ball torture. Oh, okay. I guess I'll just throw it at the trash now that it's done. <laughs> Thanks, Mac. All right, folks. Good night, everybody. Good night, river boaters. I'll see you on the morrow. Bye. Doodle -doodle.